welcome on for another edition of the Triple Cities Family Dental Pre-Game Show. A warm welcome to all of our friends on YouTube catching the pre-game show for the first time this season due to constraints with uh, contracts. With the Army-Navy football game is currently airing out on the radio, so the radio side of the broadcast will be joined in progress. We thought we'd go ahead and get started on YouTube with the pre-game show as I welcome in my partner Alex Jones. And Alex, the Black Bears firing on all cylinders last night, particularly in the third period as they score four goals and defeat the Delaware Thunder for the third time this season by a final score of seven to two. Yeah, Brooks, especially getting two goals in the last minute, none of them empty net. Exceptional job by the Black Bears who started that third period down three to two. Black Bears, just like Alex said, were only up by one goal, checked out rather three to two, and they really put the pedal to the metal in the final third period, and they were able to go ahead and continue to go on and cruise to a five goal victory here in the period. And time now for Black Bears Rewind, brought to you by our friends over at the Binghamton Hockey Booster Club. And we are pick up right where we left off in the third period. And Alex, it's Nikita Ivoshkin grabbing his second hat trick of the year, tallying not only three goals, but also two assists as well. And he finishes the night with five points. Yeah, Brooks, uh, Ivoshkin's been nuclear. Um, you know, even in the, wa the Watertown games before this, he had not gotten on the goal sheet in a while, but he had been putting up points through assists. And he just goes completely off against Delaware which is ex what we expect at this point from Nabita, Nab Nikita Ivashkin. Ivashkin had gone two weeks without a goal. We talked to Coach Gary Gill in the Tully's Coaches Corner that we're going to air a little bit on the other side of a timeout and just talked about how big it is for somebody like Nikita to have a night like that and goes off for five points. The fi five points is the most that a Black Bears had in a single game this season. And who else but Nikita Ivashkin. Tyler Jurch also extended his point streak to 43 games with a secondary helper on the first goal of the game. And the Black Bears kind of were able to coast in the third period a little bit with all that forechecking pressure, especially in the neutral zone, coming away with turnovers. A couple of unassisted goals as well in the third period for the Black Bears. And that is Black Bears Rewind, brought to you by our friends over at the Binghamton Hockey Booster Club. You can join the Booster Club for only $10 at the next Black Bears home game. That'll be next Friday, December 16th at 7 p.m. for summer in December. That's right, summer in December. So come dressed in your best Hawaiian and summertime apparel. I'll be wearing a Hawaiian shirt that has flamingos on it. Alex, I don't know if you have something already picked out, but we'll hold that thought. We're maybe tease everybody at the end of the broadcast with that one. We're sending it to a quick timeout. Come back with more on the Triple Cities Family Dental pregame show after these messages. Don't go anywhere, folks. You're listening to Black Bears pregame. Welcome back into the Triple Cities Family Dental pregame show. Triple Cities Family Dental makes your smile their priority. Schedule an appointment today by calling them at 607-545-4148. And now it's time to take a look inside the Tully's Coach's Corner. Friendly reminder that the next Tully's Good Times with Coach Show will be this upcoming Tuesday at 6 p.m. at the Tully's on the Vestal Parkway location. Join myself, Coach Gill, and the entire Black Bears team as we talk all things Black Bears. It'll be the last one for the year of 2022. We will not have one at Christmas time until we flip the calendar 2000, 
2023. So make sure you come out this Tuesday, last chance to see the team in 2022, unless you come to a future Black Bears home game. So enjoy a pregame discussion with head coach Gary Gill inside the Tully's Coaches Corner. Now time once again for the Tully's Coaches Corner. Don't forget the next Co Tully's Coaches Corner will be in this upcoming Tuesday at 6 p.m. at the Tully's on the Vestal Parkway location. And now I'm joined by Black Bears head coach Gary Gill. And Coach Gill, it was nice to see Iloshkin start to heat back up after not scoring a goal the last two weeks, coming away last night with a hat trick. And in fact, he had two assists as well. Just how big is it to have Nikita trying to start firing back on all cylinders? Well, it's great to have him firing. You know, he's a very talented player. and. Uh, you know, we, we like the fact that we got him going last night and he took the team on his shoulders last night. And, uh, uh, you know, without his efforts and hard work to the net and uh, putting the puck away, uh, maybe we'd be talking a different story right now, but it's great to have Ivashkin moving again. And the Black Bears were up by one going into the third period. It was three to two, and they scored four goals in the final period. Was there any kind of game plan switch or anything that you guys talked about in the intermission locker room about something that you guys wanted to improve on? for the final 20 minutes. Yeah, well, we adjusted our forecheck and uh, made sure that we were containing uh, the neutral zone. We wanted to control the neutral zone in the third period, and I, I thought we did a really good job of that. And, uh, we, you know, we wanted to create offense off of their turnovers in the neutral zone, and, and we again, I thought we did a really good job of that. You guys limited Delaware to just five shots on goal during the third period. Was it the play of your guys' um, style in the neutral zone? that forced Delaware so far back and almost essentially made them go 200 feet at a time just to get a chance? Well, that was the plan, right? Keep them 200 feet away from our net and make them work to come through uh, our four check in the neutral zone. And uh, yeah, I mean, when we when you do that, you execute at a pretty high level. And I thought we did it in the third period. Um, like you said, we limited them to five shots and you know we controlled the play the entire 20. And a uh, note for tonight's game on Saturday, Gavin Yates back in the lineup as the extra forward. Just how big is it for Gavin to get some ice time again and try to work his way back into the full rotation of the offensive lines that he was so good at early on in the season? Well, having Gavin back, you know, he's an extreme, uh, you know, an amazing talent, and uh, he controls the play well. He's got good speed, good vision, good hands, um, and uh, he'll have a regular role tonight, actually. He's been skating with us uh, uh, rehabbing with us and um, luckily he finally got cleared to play uh, about midweek and uh, so he's he knows what we're doing he's been out of practices watching even when he wasn't skating so he's tried to stay in tune with what the rest of the team's doing and you know we'll see what he does and you know uh, the expectation isn't very high just you know I just want to see him get out there and play his game again. All right, Coach, thank you for your time. And that is the voice of Black Bears head coach Gary Gill. Don't forget, the next Tully's Coaches Corner is on Tuesday at 6 p.m. at the Tully's on the Vestal Parkway location. Don't go anywhere, folks. You're listening to the Triple City's Family Dental pregame show. Back with you after these messages on Fox Sports 1430 in Binghamton. Welcome back into the Triple Cities Family Dental pregame show airing tonight on YouTube for the first time this season. 
Triple Cities Family Dental makes your smile their priority. You can schedule an appointment today by calling them at 607-545-4148 today. We've gone through the coach's corner, and now it's time for the injuries and scratches update brought to you by our friends over at the Court Gesture Athletic Club. And for the Black Bears, one note coming off of the injury report is Gavin Yates, who is slated to be back in the lineup tonight for the first time since Halloween. And Gavin will be on the first line with Tyson Kirkby and Tyler Jurich. And in fact, it'll be that line will be the first starting line tonight. And Yates, first man out of the tunnel, coming out as the team start to take the ice. But let's go back to the injuries and scratches. Josh Newberg, Matthew Boylard, Gino D'Angelo, and Cam Yarwood, the extra scratches tonight and healthy wise. And Riley McVeigh suffered an injury during a warm up last night in Delaware. He has been giving the night off just as a precaution. And Chris Paul in last night's winning goaltender will be the backup goaltender behind Joe Shepard. More on Joe Shepard in a little bit. So Tyson Kirkby, Gavin Yates, and Tyler Jurich, the starting forwards. Justin Coachman getting his second start as a black player as the team comes out of the tunnel dressed in their black. And Jake Schultz, the defensive partner with Coachman tonight as Joe Shepard comes out and occupies his crease. Everybody else coming out of the tunnel now as we get ready to wrap up the Triple Cities Family Dental pregame show. When we come back, we'll have the presentation of the National Anthem as we get set for Thunder and Black Bears. Don't go anywhere, folks. You're listening to Black Bears Hockey on YouTube and Fox Sports 1430 in Binghamton. Welcome back to Vision Veterans Memorial Arena and Perry Brown Intermediate School performing tonight's national anthem. And we will take a side step aside and we will listen to the elementary school's national anthem. Hello and welcome in for another edition of Black Bears Hockey on Fox Sports 1430. 
in Binghamton. It's Teddy Bear Toss Night presented by our friends over at 98.1 The Hawk, the premier country station in Binghamton. And the benefactors tonight, the Crime Victims Assistance Center for all the teddy bears that will be thrown onto the ice when the Black Bears score their first goals. I welcome in my partner, Alex Jones. We want to thank you for tuning in on the radio side. We just saw the conclusion of the Army-Navy Classic as Army defeats Navy in double overtime for the first time ever, the big game going to overtime. And we're glad that you can now be with us here on the radio side of things as we get set for the opening face-off. Alex, very quickly, thoughts on the Black Bears' chances going into tonight and what they need to do. Quickly, Brooks, they need to capitalize on their special teams. Second in power play, 22 power play goals, 2.56% power play. That's over a quarter of the time getting power play goals. If the special teams win the advantage, they're going to be Delaware tonight. And here come the Black Bears on the first shift of the game. Tyson Kirkby with it down low, circling the faceoff dot, throws a backhander on top of the net, rebound, they score. And there go the Bears. Look at them go. My, oh my, just 12 seconds in. Everything's going out on the ice. And boy, Alex, you could not have a better start of a game for the Black Bears as they get yeeted onto the ice. Mine makes it from the Jeff Kai's Auto Sales Press Box. Mine and also, Brooks, just a humble bag, rack. Mine also did make it on the ice. Got the uh, face off dot by the blue line, no big deal. Just 12 seconds in, you couldn't draw it up any better. Wow. What an incredible opportunity as the fans come all the way down from the stands. They're getting out of the way of the safety netting, and they're all getting thrown out onto the ice. It looks like our MC Ben just might have taken a spill on the ice, trying to slip down. It looks like the Black Bears are also being good sports getting out there and helping clean up as well. As well as the Delaware Thunder as well. But I'll tell you what, Brooks, great goal by Tyler Jurich. Tyson Kirkby gets a good shot, pops up in the air in front of the net. Jurich just follows it with his eyes, tips it into the back of the net, and just buries the goal. Teddy bears and stuffing were raining down. It looked like a massacre out here, Brooks. Well, unfortunately, we missed the Triple City San Lodental pregame show, but this gives us a plenty of opportunity now to talk for a while. All the Bears getting picked up on the ice. That's obviously not a way you want to start. They're, they're still raining down, Brooks. It's, it, it's, it's not pouring anymore, but it's still sprinkling. My, oh, my. And I even a fan dressed as a reindeer tonight, making his way out onto the ice. Very fitting for the theme. And now as they get serenaded, as the most wonderful time of the year, all of these teddy bears are going to be donated to the Crime Victims Assistance Center, and they're going to go to some kids in need during this holiday season, make sure that everybody has a present to open this holiday season. Well, and Brooks, this is a great cause, helping a great local charity. Anyway, you guys, anyone listening at home, if you want to help out, besides donating a bear, which you just missed out on, always nonprofits are always looking for monetary donations, specifically around the holidays, and especially with the Crime Victims uh, Assistance Center, where it's just one of those great great charities that helps out so many people in our area. Just some great photo ops for the guys with all the stuffed animals. Right. Taking a look at the Heinz Energy replay as it makes its way up onto the video board. Tyson Kirkby throws a backhander towards the net. It's a save made by Martin on the first one, but it looks like Martin batted it out of midair. It looked like Delaware was calling for a high stick right away. And Guys take a little bit of a snow angel across on the teddy bears. We got a little selly in the teddy bears, Brooks. And I just looked at the replay just to make sure. I have been a part of a game where the teddy bear toss has been waved off on the no goal, but the referee down low on the goal line immediately signaled for a goal. That's step one. The red light came on and so did the goal horn. But the biggest thing is making sure the referee says it is indeed a good goal. They have it up on the board as one nothing, just 12 seconds in. I believe that'll be Tyler Jurich's 14th goal of the season, and if so, it means he extends his point streak to 44 games this year, dating back to last season as well. And Brooks, we have a rarity in hockey, it's something you rarely see, the backup goaltender falling out on the ice right now. Now normally that's if something's gone horribly wrong, however, this is a great, great, uh, a great 
you know, just an event to have your backup bully on the ice for maybe one of the rare times that, in fact, it's a good time to have your backup keeper on the ice. Chris Paul in the backup goaltender tonight. Making some screen time on the YouTube side of things as the teddy bears have already been thrown onto the ice. And you know, we talked about it all week long as I went on a little bit of a press media tour this week and just talking to everybody about, hey, this is the game you really want to be in your seats on time for. Like, you never know what could happen first shift. And sure enough, the Black Bears make it a one nothing contest early on in this one. And now we'll see how the Black Bears play with the lead. A little bit of a different story last night as the Black Bears didn't have a lead until about the final seven minutes of the first period. And Brooks, you know, I, I feel bad. Actually, uh, the Owego, Owego Free Academy brass band was serenading us with some awesome holiday music before the game. They're packing up their equipment. They missed out on the teddy bear toss. They missed out on all the fun. And uh, those of you at home, hopefully you were tossing some teddy bears at your television after that goal. 19.48 left to go here in this one. Another bear making its way on the ice. Some, it looks like a couple people are still late to the party a little bit, getting into their seats. And that's what happens if you don't show up on time. Hey, you pay for the ticket. You might as well stay for the whole time. Exactly, Brooks. You call for in time. If you're, if you're late, if you're early, you're on time. On time, you're late. Late, you're dead. So unfortunately for those fans who missed out on that early goal by Tyler Jurich, looks like our ice is completely clean at this point, Brooks. And in fact, it is a Tyler Jurich goal. Assist going to Tyson Kirby and Gavin Yates getting an assist on his first shift back into the lineup. 19.48 left to go here. In this one, Black Bears lead 1-0 in period number one. Looks like the ice crew's finally making their way off and we are scheduled for more hockey. Brooks, if I told you five minutes had gone by and only 12 seconds had passed on the clock, you'd tell me something's gone horribly wrong. But something got, went horribly right for the Black Bears on their first shift of the night. Looks like we're ready to drop the puck once again. Zamboni looks, door trying like to get slammed shut. Coachman and Schultz Brooks are going to be the top pairing tonight for the Black Bears defense. Top line is going to be Tyson Kirkby, Roussel, and Tyler Church. One nothing Black Bears, just 12 seconds in as the Bears rain down on the ice. And now the Black Bears are in control of the puck once again. Coachman just gets it up and Kirby will just glide it down the ice. As Jurich extends his point streak to 44 on the season. Now Delaware has a chance to try to come and tie this game up. Amatitis crosses the line on sides, tries to saucer a backhander out in front, but it's blocked on the way through by Schultz. Coachman will throw it out of the zone. It looks like this one's going to miss the net, and this will be icing against Binghamton. We're bringing it all the way back. Now, 30 seconds have elapsed, and it's still a 1-0 contest. And, and Brooks, that was a great... Uh, that's the type of goals we've seen all year from the top line. They are incredibly good at working together. We've seen Boussel in recent weeks be slotted into that top line center, replacing Gino D'Angelo, and he's done a great job of creating chances off the faceoff. Delaware wins control of the puck off the faceoff, but Movali, the defenseman, turns it over down low, and Jake Schultz will take it and skate out to neutralize with it. Gavin Yates, real first opportunity for Gavin, and he will circle the net. That's what he did so well before he was injured back in Danbury before Halloween. Circles the wagons back up top of the blue line, just skating around, trying to find somebody dressed in black to pass to. Centering pass out in front. Kirkby, a little bit too open that time, as he had plenty of time to settle that one down, sent it high and wide of the target. Turning pass from Yates, nobody's home in the high slot. And out come the Thunder the other way. O'Reilly skating into the Binghamton end, throws a wrist shot deflected by Merkel out in front, and it's into the netting and out of play. Merkel not making the trip last night as one of the healthy extras, but back in the lineup tonight. And he sees that puck go off of his stick and deflects into the safety netting behind Joe Shepard. Yeah, Brooks, uh, Walters and Merkel working together tonight. That's a tough defensive pairing, real physical grouping for the Black Bears. It's gonna be interesting to see how they get play against this Delaware Thunder second line. Seven defensemen by nature playing tonight for the Black Bears. They have Cutting listed as the extra forward. We'll see if he spends more time on the blue line or if they try to work him in on the wing somewhere. But that's just something to keep an eye out for the fans at home. A wrist shot put on and Joe Shepard had to make his first save of the contest. He quickly swallows up and we will reset 
and do it again in the same faceoff dot. One forward by Corgan, but Merkel will be the first man to it. Delaware does a good job of pinching on the half boards down low. Corgan with a centering pass out in front and gets deflected, I believe, by Merkel once again. And Merkel slaps it down the ice. This would be icing against the Black Bears. But Brett Parker beats it to the line. They say no icing. Extra possession for Binghamton now as 88 in black centers up for Ivoshkin coming off a five-point night. That ended his two-week scoring drought. He had a couple assists going through Port Huron and Watertown, but good for Ivoshkin to find the back of the net as Delaware will set up the 200-foot play from behind their own cage, and that's something that Coach Gill was very imperative that the Black Bears forced the Thunder to do all last night, and it appears that they're doing the same thing here tonight. Yeah, Brooks Ivoshkin has been playing very well on the four check um, and seems to be rewarded last night with some goals finally after, like you said, that two week goal of streak. A little bit of chippiness after the whistle from JT Moritz and Brett Parker. And it looks like Delaware picking up right where they left off last night with barking at the officials. And to be fair, JT Walters did slap a stick right out of a member of the Thunder's hands. Referees didn't see that, and I believe Walters might have gotten away with a little bit of a slash there. Not on the hands, but not supposed to knock the stick out of somebody's hand. Looks like we got Powell and Colin Fitzgerald as our third pair in Brooks. And Delaware will win the faceoff, throw it back into the Binghamton end. Powell, as Alex mentioned, on the defensive pairing with Colin Fitzgerald. Powell with an assist last night as he picked up assist number 10. Bussell centering pass a little bit too out in front of Anderson. We'll see how Bussell handles playing with new line mates for the first time in what really seems like a month as he deflects one soccer style into the wickets of Trevor Martin and Martin will swallow up and melt that one down. bussell has been playing on that top line with Kirkby and Jurich for a majority of the season since Gavin Yates got hurt. But now that Yates is back in the lineup, obviously you want to see what Gavin can do coming back from the injury. You push Bussell down to the third line with Anderson and now you have Bussell even in fact playing on the wing. Kirkby has control of the face off, tried to go for the wraparound, but good defensive positioning by Asp, one of the new acquires for the Thunder squad playing in his second game. Two as in many days. The captain, Susie, who's coming off a one game suspension, gets down on a knee and he tries to play the puck with his kneecap. In fact, and now, Colin Fitzgerald goes back D to D with Powell. And the Black Bears are having a little bit of a hard time touching up. In fact, it's offsides. Delaware a little bit too early into the zone. And Delaware without Ryan Marker, it appears so far. Did not see him in warm-ups tonight. He might have snuck onto the bench, but haven't seen him on the ice as well. Movali at center ice throws it into the open corner. And now Gafferoff has his pocket picked down low out in front. Schultz getting heavily pressured on the forecheck by Amatitis, and now the Black Bears going the other way with the turnover, though. Amatitis trying to be the first man to it, but Schultz does a good job of stepping out in front. Schultz tries to clear the zone, but Aft keeps it in. Blocker save made by Shepard as he directs it into the corner. Jurich trying to knock it out of the zone. He will FIFA it over to Tyson Kirkby, and Wilson throws it back. Touch up for Delaware. They're on sides. Amatitis has a knuckle puck that's pawed down legally by Schultz, and Schultz will throw it off the boards out of the zone. Delaware has to touch up as the delayed offsides is called by the linesman. Delaware trying to change their lines. A little bit of jumbled up for the Thunder. Now skating away with it is Gavin Yates. Yates with it on his forehand. The lefty comes in, toe drag to the front of the net, tries to follow up the rebound, but Martin will poke it away. Now a three on two going the upper way. DeBacco drops it back for O'Reilly. Good back check by Brett Parker, lifting the stick at the last second. Corgan's all alone out in front, but Delaware didn't see him. Centering pass is blocked on the way through by Thompson. And now Merkel skating away with it, throws it out into neutral ice. Delaware will touch up and Corgan self pass around the captain. Two on one, centering pass out in front and Shepard puts it in a spot where nobody can come to. Ivoshkin one on two, doesn't have anybody to help out. Pass, excuse me, shot is blocked by former Black Bear Oganezov. Thompson gives Oganezov a rough ride as Ivoshkin trying to go a wrap around behind the net and turnover. Anderson in the slot. Back door, Ivoshkin just missed it as Martin was already down in the splits. Now Delaware goes the other way. Corgan crosses the line onside, stopping and starting, but he loses control of it, and Jesse Anderson will pick his pocket. JT Walters now skating away with it. Here, give it over for Thompson. Anderson at the blue line on the backhand. Pirouette spin. 
They go around Ivoskin down low in the corner. Ivoskin power move to the front, paddle down by Martin. Movali wants the goaltender to cover up, and that is what he will do. That yeah. takes us, go ahead, Alex. Uh, that was just a little indecision there between Novali and Martin. Martin thought that Novali might want to clear that puck, whereas uh, Martin, er, Novali decided, you know, we'll just eat it and kill it here. And now it is time to take our first media timeout. We went a long ways there after the first minute was stopping and starting with the teddy bear toss delay. We'll be back with more on Fox Sports 1430 after this. Welcome back to the action of Brooks Hill and Alex Jones with you here tonight at home. And it looks like someone's getting picked out for the price chopper. A lucky see the Black Bears on the little bit of the lucky side. They bat one out of the air in the form of Tyler Jurge getting his 14th goal of the season. Now 29 points on the year. And that's the difference maker so far as Binghamton leads one to nothing. Now Gafferoff in his own end with it. Sidesteps Mac Lewis, but Lewis leading on a heavy hit. Really excited to see how Bousseau and Lewis play together with tonight. Both of those guys play a very physical forward style of game. I'm excited to see this checking line out there on the ice. Also, the Butcher. A little reminiscent, Brook, of the grind line in the 90s for the Red Wings. You know, high energy, high physicality, heavy forecheck. Don't let you er don't let you get any part of the ice for free. Taylor Cutting, the extra forward, also playing on the wing right now. So we are seeing him as a forward tonight. We'll also probably see him as a defenseman sometime later. Referee and linesman concur, no icing, and it looked like Fitzgerald almost just put the puck in his own net. Shepard was luckily hugging the post and ready to go. Cutting on the other end of the ice will shove off a hit from Oganezov. Black Bears have to touch up, though. They're on a delayed offside. So they get out of the zone and touch up, but Delaware will come away with possession. 13.30 left to go here as the Black Bears have a one goal lead. They're also out shooting the Thunder six to two so far. Turnover though at the blue line. They try to give it to Yates on the centering pass. They had Jurich coming down the right wing side. It would have been a wide open two on one opportunity, but instead Delaware goes the other way. Houston Wilson throws a wrist shot high of the net of Joe Shepard. And down low for Emma Titus, but waiting for it is Tyson Kirkby in a three on one going the other way. Gavin Yates, Schultz and Kirkby. Back over to the captain, Yates wild in front. I think that's one pass too many as Kirkby couldn't get a clean play on it out in front. Brooks, he made the, uh, unfortunately, Yates made the unselfish pass there, but he's got to make the selfish play. He's got to take that shot. Good keeping at the blue line by Coachman out in front for Yates looking for his first goal back. He gets spun into the boards. Yates gets back up, and that's the important thing right there, even though a shot might not get registered. Good to see Gavin Yates back out on the ice and taking some hits. You don't get a lot of hits in practice, maybe a bump and a nudge here or there. But now that you have somebody playing against you in a different color sweater, you don't know when the hit's going to come. Debaco trying to stick handle in a phone booth, but the Black Bears will take it away. They skate out to neutralize with it, and Kirkby crosses the line on sides. A wrist shot is deflected by the defenseman, Bazarin, who came over in a trade from Elmira just a couple of weeks ago into the netting. And 12-22, we have another stoppage. Yeah, Brooks, it's been very interesting so far how you see a little bit of change up of the style of Binghamton here. They're putting on a lot of four checking pressure, which they normally do, but they're also very cluttering the neutral zone, which normally you see the defense drop a little bit back for the Black Bears. They're playing a little more aggressive against Delaware tonight. Thompson trying to fight with Corrigan for control of the puck off the faceoff. It'll be Delaware getting the better of the Black Bears this time. O'Reilly with the wrist shot and a good job going down to one knee is MJ Merkel. But puck still becomes available. Corrigan with the wrist shot wide of the target. Finds the stick of Ivoshkin. Tries to just center up for Brett Parker. That pass might have caused a little bit of parts to skip a beat right there as it didn't get off the ice and could have been dangerous turning over the puck at your own blue line. Black Bears took advantage of that a couple times last night. Ivoshkin trying to settle it down as it hops over his stick. And now number eight skating away with it near the board. Centering pass out in front for Parker, but not enough on it. 
as it makes its way to DeBacco, and DeBacco tries to get it out of the zone. O'Reilly does push it out temporarily. That forces Parker and Thompson to touch up, and Austin Thompson with a goal last night. The F1, or the high forward, as they've told me in the locker room, gets on the four check, and Delaware, once again, just cannot sustain any offensive zone time as the Black Bears are doing everything they can to keep all the shots to the outside, and they're doing a good job defensively getting away with the puck. Movali with a weak wrist shot that goes in and out of the mitt of Shepard. A little bit too soft for the goaltender to hang on. And out in front, Fitzgerald going down to a knee to make the save. And the team will clear up the loose puck. Ivoshkin just pokes it out of the zone, takes the hit from Movali. The unselfish play, and away come the Black Bears. Kyle Powell throws it over for Jesse Anderson, still wearing that full shield, coming off a nose surgery. Power move to the front, and the net comes off its pegs. And we have a stoppage with 10.51 left to go. You know, Brooks, the interesting thing about this defensive pairing of Fitzger of Colin Fitzgerald and, oh my gosh, Kyle Sh Jake Sh oh, Brooks, I, I just had a full brain break. Oh my goodness. Anyways, aggressive pairing between Powell and Fitzgerald because they essentially both play a forwards, a very offensive style of defense and can jump into the rush as a forward. You have five forwards on the ice there, essentially. That's the voice of my partner, Alex Jones. Delaware wins control of the faceoff. Is there still some fans coming in out of the concourse, making their ways to the seats with stuffed animals in their hands? I hate to tell them that they missed it already, but they will still gladly be donated to the Crime Victims Assistance Center. And now, Rosmus Asp takes a heavy hit from Justin Coachman, and that's about the first big hit that Coachman's laid on somebody since being a member of the Black Bears, and that gets the crowd. A little bit anxious there as a wrist shot's put on. I believe that hit Houston Wilson out in front of the opposing net, and the Black Bears will gladly take the chance, go the other way. Anderson on the backhand, centering up. Too far behind Bussell, and he runs into Schultz, and going the other way is the Thunder. Gafferoff, along with Amatitis, one-timer, he fanned on it, and the crowd's going to let him know about that. Black Bears go the other way, 32 opportunity. Schultz crosses the line, but Anderson's offside with 9.59 left to go. We're headed to our second media timeout. We're going to highlight that two-on-one -on, -one on the other side of this commercial. You're listening to Black Bears Hockey on Fox Sports 1430 in Binghamton. Welcome back into Fox Sports 14:30. The Black Bears are up one to nothing over the Delaware Thunder. Just 12 seconds in, Tyler Jurch gets his 14th goal of the season, and Alex Delaware with a great A opportunity right there to tie the game up. As you get a look at the Heinz Energy replay. Yeah, Brooks, it was a great uh, opportunity. The Delaware forward gets Merkel to overcommit, fight in on his side, opens the wide open pass, and, and I think they, honestly, I think the Delaware forward gave him too much speed there, Brooks. Never really got a good chance to put it on his tape. Looks like me in a game of ball hockey back home. Shout out to my Labatt Blues in the C division of the Raleigh Ball Hockey League. Centering pass out in front off of the stick of Corgan. And the Black Bears will gladly take the puck and skate away. This time they cross the line on side. Skirpy with Yates. Saucer over for Yates, but it hops his stick at the last second. Deflected high off of the glass, and Kirkby takes a little bit of a nudge. Home run pass, and Bozerin now. Nice move around JT Walters. This play is on sides, but Delaware a little bit too cute with the passing. Can't keep control of the puck, and the Black Bears will skate away once again. First line center, Gavin Yates back out on the ice. On sides, Jurch with a lot of room. Throws a wrist shot blocked on the way through. I believe DeBacco got it out in front for Delaware. Merkel towing the blue line. Throws a wrist shot. He fanned on it, so now each team has had a fan opportunity on a good scoring opportunity and Martin will just take it off of the stick of Kirkby and cover up with just about nine minutes left to go in this one. 
Yeah, Tyson Kirkby did not appreciate the check Sosie Susie gave him in the corner there, but they just made up, gave a little tap ski. Uh, but the Binghamton Black Bears are playing a very aggressive style of hockey right now, really getting after it. Delaware had a great opportunity there and just fanned it. It works. makes you think that's going to be one of the moments they regret in this game going forward. Face off one back on the set play. Powell throws a one-timer, and it's blocked away by the leg of Trevor Martin. We talked to Powell yesterday, and we were kind of kidding on the bus about how Powell doesn't have any goals, but he has 10 assists. And he said he was a team first guy, big assist. And he saves his goals for special moments. He's a teddy bear toss. Well, unfortunately, his teammate Kyle Powell beat him to that. Taken out in front is Ivoshkin. That play is legal, and it looks like a couple of members of both squads have lost him six out in front. The crowd will moan about that one. But I think that's just a good hockey check is you're not going to let somebody just go to the front of the crease and try to power move on your goaltender. And Delaware cleared the crease to use a lacrosse term there. It's off sides as they point to Colin Fitzgerald, who might have jumped the gun just a little bit. 8.23 left to go. Take a look at the Heinz Energy replay, Alex, and let me know your thoughts. Uh, Brooks, I'm going to disagree with you. I think that's a hook. Moritz gets his stick across Iboshkin's body, plants it in the ice, and takes, it takes Iboshkin down. That, to me, looks like a classic hook call. Just me personally, maybe even a trip if you really want to get in the nitty-gritty of it, but I, I don't. I disagree with the no call. Black Bears up 1-0, 8.15 left to go in this one. Only four shots on goal for Delaware. And Joe Shepard, we saw during that little last time out, was doing his edges work. As Anderson comes the other way, throws a wrist shot. Martin tries to reach out and cover it. Cutting, has it available. Hack and whack time again for the Black Bears, and Lewis knocks that one wide. Powell, though, pinching in from the blue line. Holds the line and the puck in the zone. Lewis centers up, cutting, looking for his first point as a Black Bear. Might have it right here if Anderson can score. Centering pass out in front. Lewis takes it away, and a big hit delivered by the former SUNY Oswego Laker. And Lewis goes D over to Kyle Powell. Powell has it hop over his stick, and he'll just throw it down low. Oganezov will indirect it on the back end around the boards. Black Bears doing a good job keeping up the sustained offensive pressure. This is a long shift for both teams right now as the Black Bears are trying to roll a partial forward change. We'll tell you what, Brooks, Powell was very lucky there. He almost caught a Delaware forward right in the face with his stick, trying to tip the puck back in his own. Jurich has it hop over his stick, and he's going to chase after it with Tyson Kirkby. A little bit of some loose passing from Delaware here early on in this one. Skating away is Chris Corgan. Corgan will just flip it into the open corner. It takes a funky bounce, though, and comes into the close side. It hops over the stick of Coachman. Looks like an opportunity now as a backhander is put high and wide by Austin Weber. Yates, first man to it, will step around his own man and teammate Kirkby. And Yates getting pressured on the forecheck, takes a little bit of a whack as he makes his way down to the ice. And Kirkby with control of the puck at the red line, one taps it off the linesman, works out for the Black Bears. But another turnover inside the offensive zone for Binghamton and Weber goes the other way. Black Bears just take it again. And Delaware, once again, just not being able to hold on to the puck in their own offensive side. Thunder knock it out of the zone, and Binghamton just slaps it in around the boards in the form of Walters. Walters and Merkel now out on the ice. And here comes Ivoshkin, Thompson, and Parker, the great eights, and 25 in the middle. And as Cutting collects the loose puck and will fire it over for Ivoshkin. Parker collects the loose change. Running out of real estate is Parker, though. He needs to do something with it. A good centering pass as Thompson tried to get a foot on, excuse me, a blade on it. Watching too much World Cup here this week. And Parker staying in on the forward check. Puck gets wristed off the high glass and out of the zone. It out comes to Merkel. Ivoshkin trying to center up. No, that's Parker centering up for Ivoshkin. Ivoshkin almost split the defense there. Got through that one. 5.30 left to go here. And it looks like Delaware is just already gassed here in the first period of this one. Gafferoff throws it too far out ahead of Amatitis. Walters goes back the other way and Merkel will throw it into the open corner. Brett Parker getting on the four check. Pinching in is Thompson. Asp down low with it, 77 dressed in white. Wilson has it hop over his stick. Black Bears had it on sides, but Thompson decides to pull out himself. Trying to throw it up for Merkel, but a little bit too far out in front for MJ. Slapped into the open corner, and Shepard will just melt it down and slow the roll with 4.54 left to go. We'll take our first or final media timeout 
of the first period. Don't go anywhere, folks. Black Bears on top of the Delaware Thunder by one with 4.54 left to go here on Fox Sports 14.30 in Binghamton. Welcome back to the action here on Fox 1430. Off the faceoff, Delaware threw a wrist shot wide of the target, but a good play by Bussell. Soccer style back to his toe blade. Anderson out in front, back end, rebound, they score. Mac Lewis cashes in, and the Black Bears lead two to nothing. A two on one with Bussell and Anderson. The first save was made by the goaltender, but the trailer coming into the play was Mac Lewis, and he was able to cash in as we get a look at the Heinz Energy replay. Brooks, this is where uh, you can get into some real trouble as a hockey team. All the defenders are turned looking at the puck. No one identifies Mac Lewis as he enters the zone. Rebound off the kick pad. Mac Lewis drives the net, buries in the back of the net. Black Bears ice the puck off the face off. It comes all the way back, but where it matters the most, the Black Bears now up by a pair as they lead two to nothing as Mac Lewis grabs his second goal of the season. Yeah, Brooks, uh, Mac Lewis just did a great job flying into the zone and following the puck, following the shot, getting his stick on the ice directly in front of the crease, buried it in the back of the net. Jesse Anderson gets the primary assist and Jamie Bussell gets the second and Good to see Bussell still producing, even though he's changing lines. Bussell out in front, trying to add his name to the goal column. Sent a one-timer right out in front in the low slot. Just exploded that one over the net, Brooks. Black Bears are sensing some blood in the water here in period number one, just like they had last night in the third period when they started to pile it on. Going the other way now, trying to find Austin Weber, but it's Bellar. Bellar has his puck, and it gets deflected just off the top of the glass. It stays in play. Some fans in the front row are already getting ready to catch that puck. Fitzgerald skating away with it. And now Kirkby settles it down just inside the blue line. Cross sides over to Jurich. Jurich fumbles with it. A blocker save made by Martin. Down low for Yates. Yates has it stripped away from him. Yates going for it one on two. And Delaware will just slap it around the boards. The captain holds the line. Mitts of a partial line change that gets deflected into the netting. 3.34 left to go, and another golden opportunity for the Black Bears right there trying to follow up a goal with another goal on the very next shift. Yeah, Brooks, at the end of that uh, defensive play when the puck got cleared, Rasmus asked, kind of stuck his foot out there, pulled Perkby's out from underneath him, but you wonder, has he ever seen anybody like Coachman or Cutting in the second Swedish league where it was the last he played before ending up in Delaware? Line's been giving a little bit of some barking orders out to Tyler Jurich, telling him to get back in the faceoff dot, and Delaware will win the faceoff. They did a good job of that last night. I would believe Austin Thompson did the best out of any of the Black Bears forwards on the faceoff control. They ran the set play with Nikita Ivashkin on his power side so many times in the game, and Thompson did a great job winning the faceoffs. Now pucks down low behind the net of Trevor Martin. Martin tries to elevate it off of the glass and held in at the line by Schultz. Schultz fans on it, and a two-on-one going the other way. Wilson now goes one-on-one, -on -one and a great gap up by MJ Merkel, having his stick out in front and deflects the shot attempt before it could ever get off. Yates now skating into the high slot. A lot of room for Gavin to work with, but it's blockered away into the netting by Martin with 2.55 left to go. Yeah, uh, just a great job by MJ Merkel, keeping his stick to the ice, identifying when the Delaware forward was about to attack it and just 
stabbing that puck away before uh, he ever got a chance. As you see on the Heinz interview play, though, that was Yates' chance. In the slot, wide open, you gotta take that shot when you have it. And you're not gonna get too many of those opportunities when you come down in the high slot and nobody's directly in front of you. And it's a good shot off, and it's just a good save made by Martin. That's gonna happen. Looks like we're kicking them both out. Looks like Thompson and Corrigan are being ushered out and that will end the set play for the Black Bears as Ivashin goes to the true right winger side instead of on the outside of the dot. Parker trying to soccer style it to his teammates but it's Delaware coming up with control of the puck. Corrigan over to Ask and Ask throws it out of the zone. Black Bears though still in control. They just have to touch up on the delayed offsides. Parker off of the boards right in front of the Delaware bench having a hard time picking it out of the corner. You know, that ice starts to pile up here in the final minutes of the period as the Zamboni gets ready to make its rounds. JT Walters one ups the puck, trying to find Ivoshkin in stride. Ivoshkin a little bit too far behind that one, not quick enough to catch up to it. Uh, Delaware throws it out of the zone, no icing. And as Linesman says, uh, Walters could have played that one as he let it go through his wickets. And now Thompson trying to backhand it out of the zone. Ash will throw a slap shot high of the target. Got caught in the snow in the corner. Brooks really slowed down its momentum as it was it looked like it was heading out of the zone. Choppy ice conditions here in the final two minutes of the period. And Corgan will just backhand it down low. Nobody for Delaware home in the trapezoid corner right in front of the Black Bears locker room. And a free possession given to the Black Bears as Delaware gets five fresh bodies out on the ice. Thompson now skating away with it. He still has some energy left in the tank. Indirectly left it for Ivoshkin. Ivoshkin trying to go down Port Street all the way to the net. He's looking for a call. I don't think he was going to get that one going one on four. Hard to draw one there. And Powell matched up with Susie down low in the corner. Two members of the captain groups for both clubs. Fighting for it down low. And Bussell will play it down from his hand to himself. Bussell's one on two. He has some trailers if he waits up a second. Stopping and starting. And he gives it back to Fitzgerald at the point. Shots blocked. Fitzgerald though stays with his wits in, he comes in down low, takes a little bit of a slash on the hit. Powell, wrist shot wide of the target and everything. Bussell's covering in for Powell right now. And Lewis down low to Cutting. Cutting shoves off a hit, and that's gonna be one thing that's gonna be hard to do. Cutting will just keep on going. One minute left to go here in the period. Backhander out in front, off of the back of the net. Centering pass, Cutting on the backhand, turn around, kick save made by Martin. Puck still available, he didn't cover it up and it's chipped out of the zone by Delaware. 40 seconds left to go. Black Bears trying to continue the pressure on here in the final minute. They get it into Martin, but a little bit too far in front of Fitzgerald, and Martin will wisely melt this one down and let his team settle down. Some excellent stick handling on that last shift from the Butcher, known for his physical play since he's arrived at Binghamton uh, last week, two weeks ago, and excellent puck control there. Got a couple shots on that, hopped over a hip check seeing a different side of the butcher other than just laying the body picks. Off the face off, a little bit of a knuckle puck from Tyler Jurich, fooled the goaltender, but the rebound gets popped up into the netting. Gives us a chance to finish that point, but it's good to see Taylor Cutting, you know, be kind of a Swiss Army knife. You don't want to just see him as an enforcer or a brute on the blue line for the Black Bears, but seeing that he's not afraid to generate and one, take shots. You see some people who are tentative to take shots because they don't want to miss. And Cutting not afraid to turn one around and try to throw it on net. I believe his first shot on goal was blocked by the goaltender. Kept in at the line though by Jerich. Goes across for the captain. Wrist shot by Schultz. Rebound becomes available out in front. Yates fanned on it. Coachman with it now. Wrist shot into the chest of the goaltender and blocked out of the zone. Five seconds left to go in the period and the Black Bears will take a 2-0 lead into the locker room after the first 20 minutes. Yeah, Brooks, that was... Uh one of the more less stressful periods of Black Bear in hockey, I personally have got the call. Uh, it was just utter domination on all three areas of the ice. The Black Bears controlled possession, controlled shots, out shooting Delaware 18 to four. Delaware uh, didn't even get a shot on their own really good chance in front of the net on a two on one where Merkel overcommitted and game at the defender to try to cut off the shot. Um, left the shooter wide open and just went off his stick. Pretty total period. I mean, we haven't had a single penalty called. This this officiating crew seems to let to want the teams to play, which I am all for, Brooks. Through 20 minutes, the Black Bears lead two to nothing. Before we head to commercial, 
and got to talk about our friends over at Ideal Bowling Center. It's the perfect place for Binghamton hockey fans to bowl. With open bowling all week long, they have money-saving specials. Ideal is a great place for your family, friends, company parties, and special occasions, particularly around the holiday season coming up. Ideal Bowling Center at 119 Jennings Street in Endicott is so much more than just your favorite bowling alley. I want to thank our friends over at Ideal Bowling Center for their continued support of Black Bears hockey. We're going to head to a quick timeout, come back with the Excite Motorsports intermission report after these messages. Black Bears up by two on Fox Sports 1430 in Binghamton. The Binghamton Black Bears are back in action Friday, December 16th against the Watertown Wolves. Puck drop 7 p.m. It is summer in December, so wear your best summer wardrobe. Get your tickets now at BinghamtonBlackBears.com or call the office 607-722-7367. Fans, it's that time of the year again. Binghamton Black Bears holiday packs are now on sale. For $80, you receive four ticket vouchers, four t-shirts, and an ornament. It makes for the perfect holiday present. Order online at blackbearshop.com or visit the third floor hockey office. And happy holidays from the Binghamton Black Bears. Now it's time to take a look back from the previous Tully's Good Times with Coach Show. Make sure to subscribe to the Binghamton Black Bears YouTube page so you can catch every show. Join us Tuesday, December 13th. Join myself and head coach Gary Gill and the entire Black Bear squad as we talk everything hockey for the hour. Come out on December 13th for the next Tully's Good Times with Coach Show. Welcome back into the Tully's Good Times with Coach Show. I'm Brooks Hill and now joined by Black Bears defenseman Colin Fitzgerald. And Colin, thank you for taking some time out of your evening and spending some time with us here at Tully's. Yeah, for sure, Brooks. Uh, appreciate you having me. Happy to be here. Oh, I have to say, you might be the best dressed Black Bear tonight. You know, coming in, is that a uh, is that a flannel right now? Uh, I think it's a, a mix. I got it at Hollister. I got to give props to my mom. She found it uh, during the summer. So. Okay, now what, let's talk about the ice on the wrist right here. It looks like it's carved right out of a tree. No, hold it up. Hold on, Fitzy. Hold, let's hold it up to the camera. There we go. Okay, there we go. So, big watch guy, I take it? Not really. This is actually uh, my older brother's company he started. Uh, it's called Goodwood. He's a baseball player, so it kind of goes with the uh, the baseball bat theme. And he gave me one, and it's uh, I wear it for every game and pretty much any time I get dressed up. Okay, well, you know, that's a really good shout-out to the Goodwood Watch Company. <laughs> and Fitzy's brother starting his own business, everything like that. So your brother, big into baseball, and you obviously are big into hockey. Do you have any other siblings? Uh, yes, my oldest brother, he also, we grew up playing baseball and hockey, so I, uh, I owe everything to them for, for being where I am, you know, having to, to play at a higher level uh, growing up as the, the youngest boy in the family. So what position were you in baseball? I was, a, I was a lefty thrower, so it was either pitcher, first base, or outfield. And uh, outfield was more the uh, spot I fell into in high school once we started playing really competitively. Okay, now high school baseball, high school hockey. Obviously, they're two different seasons, correct? Uh, yep. At least from Illinois. You're from Burridge, <laughs> Illinois? That's correct. Is that yep. just, now is that like a suburb of Chicago? Yeah, or? it's about 15, 20 minutes uh, west of the city. Okay, so when did you realize that, hey, if I'm going to have a chance, I need to either switch. Uh, I need to either go into baseball or go into hockey. When did that come into the picture? Uh, junior, senior year of hockey or of uh, high school was kind of where I would have to make the decision. You know, hockey or baseball. Um, my brother who plays baseball, he made that decision his senior year um, and chose baseball. I kind of two tracked it, and uh, it worked out in the end. I'm, you know, obviously here playing hockey, but yeah, I, I never, I never had the uh, the ability to pick between the two. Well, it seems that you made the inevitable choice to, you know, go the professional route in hockey. You're in your second season with the Black Bears, and we talked about it in the pregame interview, um, or excuse me, during the Excite Motorsports intermission interview, uh, I believe on a Friday night while we were up in Michigan, just talking about, you know, how you started the year in Birmingham with another team. You played last year with the Black Bears, and then, you know, you joined the team late. You know, it was a... Uh, well, we talked about the transition uh, on the pregame show, but if we can just highlight and circle back on that. What was it like, uh, the process of you know coming back to Binghamton after the season had already started? Yeah, I had been in contact with uh, you know Coach Gill here, Coach Reynolds, and uh, a lot of the you know the veterans that I played with last year, just telling them you know 
really day by day how things were going. And um, so they, they knew I was kind of on the bubble uh, the whole time I was there at Birmingham. And um, they said, you know, like you always have a home here in Binghamton. Um, and, you know, for that, I'm, I'm really grateful. And the hospitality would be returned from you. You pick up your first goal of the season. It comes in the final second. And looking at the stat sheet from Saturday, oh, excuse me, no, from from Friday night, it reads 1959 of the second period. So the latest goal that you can possibly <laughs> score in a period, you intercept a pass in the neutral zone, and you absolutely put a defender you know, in a blender, deking around him, and you elevated the puck past the goaltender to give the Black Bears a 2 to nothing lead going into the final 20 minutes. Uh, we talked about it, what you saw, but just for everybody here at Tully's, what was it that you said, like, oh, hey, like I have a chance to make a play right here? Or because a lot of people in that situation was like, oh, like, hey, let's just, you know, let's run out the clock. You know, we got to kill off a penalty anyway, and we're just going to the intermission and we're talking about what we're going to do five on four. Mm -hmm. uh, I saw their goalie, he, you know, looked down the ice for a home run pass, and that was, you know, my eyes kind of lit up at that time because I knew I could pick off the pass. Um, after that, it was, you know, there were seven seconds when he shot the puck, so. It was a, a race against the clock, and um, I just read off what, what their defenders gave me, and uh, it worked out. Also, one thing that I know, so you play defense. What's a defenseman doing all the way at the offensive <laughs> blue line on the penalty kill? Wouldn't that be a forwards job normally? We were uh, we were in the middle of a change kind of, so okay. all right. um, yeah, I, I kind of just read the play, and I figured if it got past me uh, – I'd probably be in trouble, but, hey, it worked out. <laughs> well, you know, like Coach said, there's there's no pictures on the score sheet at the end of the night. I wish I had a picture of it when you intercepted the pass in the neutral zone. I said, oh, he's got his man one-on-one. -on -one. This could be a chance for a shorthanded goal. I didn't know that you had it in you to deke around the guy and then send him down to the ice and then score one and beat the clock. Also, the most impressive part to me was – knowing that when you intercepted the puck, you really had about five and a half to six seconds left to go, and you still got the puck in with about eight-tenths of a second left up on the clock. The Black Bears earlier in the year were up in Danbury in a game that went to overtime. Danbury actually scored a goal, but the referee washed it out immediately at the final horn of the third period. That would have given Danbury the extra point winning in regulation. The Black Bears going home with nothing. So kudos to you for realizing that hey i have enough time this is a i would say like it's a low risk high reward kind of play mm -hmm. they still have to go they have to tag up there they still have to get on sides and they're going to put up a contested shot they wouldn't have had a clean break anyway mm -hmm. so we talked about transition from birmingham back to binghamton coming back into the fbhl and coming back home with the black bears and i was looking at the roster again now and we're up to 15 guys who played at some point on the team last season how much of a help does that play for a team who's going for a Commissioner's Cup this year after making it to the playoffs last year? I think it's huge, um, especially the guys that have been in this league for, you know, X amount of years. Um, we, we can learn, obviously, from, from what went wrong um, last year. And I think, you know, it helps build a, a serious group of um, like a, a real family that you can really get a good team chemistry going when you um, you've been playing with guys for you know a couple of years and um, I, I think if we want to you know win it all at the end of the year that's one of the biggest uh, differentiators between any team is is how well can you come together and um, play for the guy next to you well the Black Bears had plenty of time to come together this weekend long bus rides on Thanksgiving and then on the Saturday into Sunday afterwards now, rumor has it that when traveling on the bus, because sometimes the bus gets a little hot, you just like to take your shirt off on the bus. Can you confirm or deny that? I can confirm. Uh, it usually happens at the start of the trip. Um, I'm just, I've been, I get hot loading the bus, and I, uh, I just got to go tarps off once I get on there. Okay. Now, when did that start? Did that start back in high school, or was that a, you know college thing or is it just like oh you know what like i turned professional i'm gonna wear my sh i'm gonna take my shirt off on the bus <laughs> that, that was a uh, college thing um definitely started in college uh acha buses it's uh those trips are you know 
not not too great and uh so yeah it started in college <laughs> okay so also while we're on the topic of things that Fitzgerald does on the bus we're on the way back from Michigan and we leave Saturday night around 9 30 Eastern time you know leaving the Detroit area coming back through and Thanksgiving has already happened and passed uh, apparently you were listening to Christmas music the entire way back is that also true that's true. Um, I didn't sleep at all. I just listened to Christmas music. Uh, so you didn't sleep at all the entire ride back? Didn't sleep at all. Um, I got a pretty good playlist on Spotify if anyone wants to check it out. Um, oh, okay. <laughs> now, are you are you a person that puts the Christmas tree up before Thanksgiving, or are you a day after, you know, Black Friday, Christmas tree goes up, or is it, oh, you know what, we wait till December to put the Christmas tree The way that I'm – hearing this right now it makes it seem that like you're a guy who has the christmas tree up like before thanksgiving <laughs> as early as possible as soon as possible that tree's going up um my, my parents know that i love love decorating for christmas so they were decorating the house pretty early before thanksgiving and sending me pictures and videos and uh yeah i just i like being together with my family and christmas time is you know that's that so i i love it well with christmas break coming up uh almost exactly a month i believe christmas break ends a month from today what is it that you plan to do going back home or spending time with your family um not exactly sure uh hopefully it's cold enough i can play some pond hockey with my brothers um but you know there's with my older brother playing baseball he's gone for you know good chunk of the year as well so it's nice to have this time where we're all together as a family and uh just you know being with each other means the world all right. Last last question about Christmas, I promise. <laughs> what is your top three Christmas songs? Since obviously you listened to Christmas songs for the last ten hours, I know you have some favorites. <laughs> yeah, so my, my number one favorite is uh, the Christmas Canon by Trans Siberian Orchestra. Uh, number two, I would say uh, Simply Having a Wonderful Christmas Time by uh, okay. Paul McCartney. Uh, three, whew, I'll go with... Um, the little drummer boy. That was my my grandpa's favorite. So okay. All right. Uh, honestly, I'm quite surprised you didn't say Mariah Carey. <laughs> it's all right. It's only on the you know top 100 every Christmas season. But you know that's why we ask the questions. Everybody has an opinion, and sometimes it's okay to be wrong. So, <laughs> wow. I'm actually I'm still just I'm shook up a little bit about your top three <laughs> Christmas songs. But you know what? Does it matter the version of the song? As in, like, A Wonderful Christmas Time, you said by Paul McCarthy. Mm. Does it matter who sings that version or who sings the version of the song? I think it can definitely play a part for okay. sure. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Well, that's <laughs> just a little tidbit, and we'll probably elaborate on as the December home games come through here. The Black Bears play six home games in the month of December. And fun fact, they only play two teams. The Watertown Wolves and the Delaware Thunder are essentially just going to have a month-long series against the Binghamton Black Bears. Tickets are still available for all six of the home games at BinghamtonBlackBears.com. And, Colin, before we let you go, I need you to just turn and look at me into the camera all the way. There we go. All right. So you got a haircut this week. And it, what went into the hairstyle change? Because I can tell everybody at home that you did not look like this a week ago, and I think it looks pretty solid. <laughs> yeah. Um, my brother is the one that plays baseball. He started the mullet train, so I've always kind of been on that. And then, um, I, I don't know, I just I like the, the lines and the size. I think it, you know, looks good. <laughs> Have you ever thought about fading your number into your hair? I know that's a big baseball thing, like yeah. maybe like in the high school and like the travel ball level, but – since you obviously have such so much inspiration from baseball, I just wanted to know if it ever th crossed your mind. I've never thought of it, but maybe that'll be a uh, thing for playoffs this year. That's that's a good idea. Yeah, you might be the first person in the FPHL to have their number faded into their hairstyle. <laughs> well, Colin, thank you for spending some time with us. Thanks for being a good sport. Well, we had a little bit of fun here. Don't go. Power outages are a thing of the past when you have a Generac home standby generator installed by the team at American Electric. Give them a call today or visit them on the web at aegenerators.com.
If you're looking to install a beautiful, durable, and handcrafted countertop, call Alice James Construction. The Southern Tier's most trusted stone fabrication will design and install your dream countertop and let you choose from a premium selection of natural stones like marble, granite, or quartzite. Stone or granite countertops starting as low as $35 per square foot installed. Schedule your free quote and receive a free sink with your countertop project. Call 607-275-5495. Getting your hands on an all-new CF Moto side-by-side -side or four-wheeler is now easier than ever at ExciteMotorsports.com. Purchase your next power sports vehicle with our new, easy, and quick online buying experience. Browse inventory on ExciteMotorsports.com. Buy. Get approved for financing and e-sign online right from your phone. Ride. Have your new power sports vehicle delivered to your home the next day at no extra charge. Browse. Buy. Ride. Fun starts here at ExciteMotorsports.com. .com. Welcome back to the second period presented by Lofts at JC, the official housing partners of the Binghamton Black Bears. They offer luxury housing with no compromises. The complex has beautiful one, two, and three bedroom units. Fill out an application today at lofts at jc.com. As we get set for the second period, Alex, the Black Bears with 18 shots on goal as they will look to almost put the nail in the coffin for Delaware in this period like how they did last night when they scored four. They have a two goal advantage. We'll see how they play with it as we get set for the middle period. Referee with his arm up in the air. We're ready to go still. Have not had a penalty called yet tonight. And we are underway. Delaware wins the opening face off of the period. And the Black Bears will just throw it back into the offensive zone. Now skating away, Pierre-Luc Bellar. One of the best players on this Delaware team takes a little bit of a rough ride from Coachman. And Shepard will just melt it down, and that will let more fans come to their seats as the first 20 seconds have elapsed, and we have not scored a goal this period. Yeah, Brooks, as we see the fans roll in, always grabbing some great concessions, provided by American Food and Vending. Shout out them for providing some of the best, maybe the best concessions in the FPHL. It's going to be interesting, Brooks, see if we get any special teams play this period. None so far in the game. Kirkby misses the puck, and it comes all the way back down for an icing. And Delaware with another opportunity for an offensive zone faceoff here in the second period. Still yet to be in 30 seconds into this one. We've seen, yep. we've seen the first minute of both periods so far go by very slowly. And then the middle portion of the period just absolutely fly by. Faceoff one back by Delaware. Dibako throws a wrist shot, and it's going to be blocked on the way through. Coachman, first man to it for the Black Bears as Jarrett will throw it all the way down the ice. And they say icing once again. Excuse me, no, they say that he didn't touch it. 
at the blue line, and it would come back once again. Yeah, I think George disagrees with that one a little bit. He thought he touched it on the way through. Hard angle for us to see here in the booth, so we got to go with the referee's word. Uh, bit of tennis going on here. It's going to be a little bit of a back and forth matchup with the Black Bears and the Thunder, I think, to start out this period. Wilson now with control of it, and he turned it over. Jake Schultz takes it away, and now Tyson Kirkby crosses the line with Jurich two on two. Jurich can't get a paddle on it. Gets chopped out into the stands as teams will fight for it. And looks like a lucky fan in row BB is going home with the souvenir tonight. Yep, a good, fa a nice souvenir for a lucky fan with some quick hands, Brooks. Offensive zone face off for the Binghamton Black Bears. Let's see what kind of set play they can set up with Nikita Ivashkin and Thompson here. This is the set play that they ran so well last night. Thompson tried to win it back to Ivashkin cleanly. That's step one of the plan, but Ivashkin does take control of the loose puck. Parker within the faceoff dot, and Thompson looking to bat one out of the air, Rumble Pony style once again. But Delaware comes away with it. They just throw it too far in front of Walters. No icing. Oganezov pinching down from his blue line spot now with Delaware. As Movali holds the opposite line, he turns it over to Merkel. Merkel takes a look up and a good backhand pass to find Ivoshkin in stride. Ivoshkin crossing the right wing line. Gets tied up down low with O'Reilly. Oganezov coming in to lend a helping hand, but O'Reilly skates away with it himself. He plays it down to himself with his hand. O'Reilly, wrist shot blocked on the way through by Shepard. Never made it into the crease. Shepard coming to the top of the blue paint and just directs it into the corner. Ivoshkin knows that his teammates are going for a line change. That long second period change, it's important for those defensemen to get off and get that puck deep. And now Thompson on the four check. And Delaware coming the other way in the form of Corrigan. Corrigan crosses the line on sides. Wrist shot from the outside, right wing side. And easily detected by Shepard. And out come the Black Bears the other way. Lewis didn't know who was going to touch it. Black Bears cross the line on sides. Lewis looking for his second goal. Would be his first multi-goal game of the season. Centering up for Boussel, but it a good defensive stick by the captain for Delaware, Susie. Forces Binghamton to touch up on the offsides. They say no icing, goes the other way. And Fitzgerald sees a Mac Lewis trying to call for it, but Asp holds the line. Gives it up for Anderson, though. Black Bears come the other way, and Anderson giving a rough ride right out in front of the Burn, Derry, and Delhi advertisement. And Fitzgerald taken down to the ice by Asp, and Asp centering up for Gafferoff. Gafferoff throws a blocked shot out in front. Bussell tries to one-hand it out of the zone, but unsuccessful. Amatitis has his shot blocked by Bussell, and Anderson skates into open ice, comes down the left wing side. Anderson centering with Fitzgerald, and Fitzgerald looking for his second goal of the season just off the end of his toe, of his blade. Yeah, Brooks, you know, Asp has been playing very well for a guy who just got here from Sweden. Um, playing in the Swedish second league. He's been playing with a bit of physicality, a bit of a bite, and some good shots in the offensive zone. A cherry picker in the form of Gafferoff out in front, and Shepard calls the bluff and will just direct it past Wilson on the backhand. Gafferoff trying to catch the Black Bears defense sleeping, and in fact he did. And if that pass is on the money, they have a breakaway going the other way. But the Black Bears now cross the line, three on three. Yates centers up. Deflected put on by Tyson Kirkby down low. Now Yates still in control of the, it, within the faceoff dot, but he has it stripped away by Dubaco and Oganezov was skated out of the zone. Black Bears are still offsides. Kirkby touches up. Jurich, spin Orama, backhander, and save made by Martin. That would have been a pretty one. Coachman holds the blue line, throws a wrist shot, never made it to the goaltender. Dubaco skates away with it as Dubaco now. Red line and blue line, drops it back. Amatitis, wrist shot looking for a tip, none provided. Back to the point for Oganezov. Oganezov, snapshot wide of the target, rebound, they score. Dennis Gafferoff gets it off of the end boards, and Delaware cuts into the deficit. They now trail by one, and right place, right time for the Thunder is 22. Well, Brooks, it looked like the Thunder have been trying to set this up for a while, and Binghamton only has themselves to blame. It almost looks like they haven't showed up at all this second period. Um, you, you think maybe even that they went into the locker room thinking a little bit like, hey, we're going to sleepwalk to this game. Delaware's here to play, and they are getting, they've been setting up that set play with a cross, a deep pass from the blue line off the top of the boards, landing at that opposite circle. Look for that more often now that they have a goal on it. 
It's an even strength goal to Dennis Gafferoff. We'll see how the assists are scored. I believe it was Oganezov who put in a slap shot from the point behind the net and he just pounces right onto the stick of Gafferoff. And Oganezov now with two points against his former team on back-to-back -back nights and don't look anywhere now, but this is a one goal game. Only the eighth shot on goal by the Thunder and it gets past Joe Shepard and Shepard just, you know, you really can't blame him on that one is he didn't know where the puck was gonna be. It just bounces right onto the stick of Gaffer off. The Black Bears come the other way. Thompson looking to grab that goal right back. Backhands it out in front. Schultz puts one on and the goaltender Martin steers it aside. Good shift by Schultz getting in deep, following that puck and getting a good opportunity on net. Thompson grabbing the puck and bringing it into the offensive zone, Brooks. Thompson on the backhand trying to go to that short side corner and give the Black Bears the lead, but Martin stands tall and we're shoulder that one away. Movali now crosses the red line and the blue line, throws a wrister on the net of Shepard and Shepard does the white thing and just slows this game down with 14.34 left to go. Delaware is on the board and the Black Bears lead has been cut down to one. More after these messages on Fox Sports 14.30 in Binghamton. And Alex, before we get back to the action, looks like our section tonight, section 15, where the press box is located, has been voted as the Nurchies section of the game. Yeah, Brooks, it's exciting. Uh, what's your favorite order at Nurchies personally? I like the honey mustard chicken and get some garlic knots on the side. Oh, see, I'm a picky eater, and that's probably why I'm the weight that I am. So I'm just a classic pepperoni guy. If I have my choice of favorite flavor of pizza of all time, it is white sauce pepperoni. And that is, that's always my go-to if it has the opportunity to present itself. But I know I think I'm in the minority of that decision. Turnover, though, for the Black Bears is this period might be getting away from a little bit. Walters, though, delivers a boom and looks like we have our first penalty of the game called by the trail referee. It's a high sticking call that goes against Binghamton and the power play for Delaware, which connected one time last night, has an opportunity to tie this game up. Uh, it looks like it's going to be on... I, uh, there's a little confusion as to who it's on. Walters doesn't believe it's him. It looks like it's going to be Mac Lewis on the high stick. I did not catch it in time uh, in the play, Brooks. Maybe it happened outside of the zone where we weren't seeing. Let's take a look Let's at the Heinz Energy replay here. And Walters takes his man down and no fault to the camera crew. Yeah, I see it. It's just before the play starts. It's away from the play. And that's why the trail official was on top of it instead of the referee in the offensive zone. Gives us an opportunity to talk about the Atlas James Construction Company officiating crew tonight, Gordon Laves and Jared Matrano, the two referees, Chris Russo and Isaac Kessler, the two linesmen. Weber with a wrist shot trying to find a man in the high slot. Black Bears need to gap up a little bit more as Weber throws one wide of the target. I believe that goes off of a member of the bench for Delaware. This is knocked out of play. I believe that was the goal scorer, Brooks Oganezov. I think you're right as well, Alex. And now, well, Oganezov assisted that. It's Dennis Gafferoff with the goal, but Oganezov with two points against his former team in the last two days, less than 24 hours apart. Northeastern Striping Corporation penalty kill tonight, seeing its first opportunity on the ice. Bussell and Kirkby, the two forwards, and Fitzgerald and Powell, the defenseman, and Bussell does a smart thing. He doesn't really try to get possession of the faceoff. He just tries to slap it down the ice as hard as he can, force Delaware to come all the way back. Now Gafferoff sidesteps Kirkby and Powell. Gafferoff trying to tie the game up himself. I believe Shepard got a shoulder to it, and Kirkby trying to fly the zone, get it out, and the Black Bears have not done so yet. Down low in the faceoff dot for Wilson. Kirkby tying up with it, gets back to the defensive point. And DeBacco skates with it now to Weber. Weber back to DeBacco. DeBacco cross ice for the captain, Susie. Susie has it hop his stick, and here comes Fitzgerald flying in. Double team comes from the Black Bears. Got to watch out. Kirkby diving out, out onto the ice, tries to slap it out of the zone. Bussell, second man, does. 
and a big effort from Tyson Kirkby, who is crawling back over to the bench for a much needed line change as the Black Bears are 30 seconds away from killing off this penalty. Susie touches up at the blue line, plays on size. They drop it back for Gafferoff. Susie getting into the high slot, wrist shot high of Shepard's net. He follows up his own rebound like a true three point shooter. Oganay's off over to Weber. Weber, nifty little move trying to get around Thompson. Oganazov throws a slap shot. Save made by Shepard. Rebound controlled. And Powell puts it into the corner. Five seconds left to go in the penalty. Gafferoff will center up for Weber in the faceoff dot. Out in front. Nobody home for Binghamton to collect the loose change. But now Kyle Powell trying to catch Thompson on sides. They have a trailer if they can find him. Thompson will draw a penalty. And the Black Bears are going to the extra man offense for the first time tonight as the head referee in front of the play calls a hold. Yeah, Brooks, a pretty blatant hold as well. However, one of those that you kind of need to do, that was a dangerous play for the Black Bears. One of the most dangerous times on the ice is when the power play lets out. You get a guy coming fresh out of the box, you're not accounting for in your defensive scheme. A lot of times on the power play, you'll have an extra forward in there. And you know what? Not an unsmart hold by Organizov, who has the point on the night with the assist. Um, not an unsmart penalty. I actually think Brooks, the earlier one for Shepard, the shot on that that uh, we thought was a shoulder, I think it was actually a Mike Richter headshot. And they're swapping out helmets right now, getting a change because I think a little chip got taken out of the out of his keeper mask um, when he got that shot on him. The linesman lending a hand over to Joe Shepard in the net and it looks like he is in fact maybe grabbing another mask from behind or you're grabbing something from head equipment manager Tyler Zwig and Zwig doing a good job trying to help Shepard out as much as he can in the time being you know you don't want to ever force a goaltender out of the game but Paulin still sitting down in his chair located by the locker room for the Black Bears hasn't moved a muscle yet it looks like Shepard is going to continue it looks like he has a new buckle on his helmet as he throws it back on and skates his way back to his crease. Black Bears are on the power play for the first time tonight and they are operating at 25 and a half percent so far this season. Opportunity number one tonight. They win the face off is step one. They get it down low for Bussell. Bussell trades places with Jerich down low. Jerich power move to the front and snared out of the air by Martin. Excellent draw save by Martin there. Just a quick snipe. Looks like they changed up this power play a little bit. They're adding Jesse Anderson to the defensive unit as well as Kyle Power. I think we believe that'll be the second uh, defensive unit for the power play teams losing the puck from the draw by the Black Bears. Black Bears going the other way now as they have to retreat into their own zone. Shepard plays the puck. Amatitis on the forecheck. Forces a little bit of an errant pass, but the Black Bears come the other way. Three on two, crossing the line. Bussell, wrist shot, and it looks like Martin might have just got a blocker to it. Or might have dinged off the iron on the outside. Powell on the way through, top of the umbrella, loading up the cannon to Jurich. Those two play catch with each other, back to Powell. And now Jurich, one-timer, side of the net. Everybody thought it was in. Puck becomes available, and they score. Tyson Kirkby hacks and whacks at it. He follows the play to the whistle. And the Black Bears have a two-goal lead once again. Excellent job by Tyson Kirkby trying to keep everything in, uh, just staying with the puck as it squirts through. They've been working that Powell to Jurich uh, shot a little bit, trying to set it up, trying to set it up. They finally set it up, bury it in the back of the net, and it ends up a black bear goal. We see a couple teddy bears come in errantly on the ice. Fans, we got to remind you when you come to games, do not throw things on the ice. The, the initial teddy bear toss is a special occasion. If you throw things on the ice, that'll cost your fingers at Black Bears and send guys to the penalty box. That's what happens when you're late to the game sometimes. Some bears making their way out onto the ice. And it looks like one of our off-ice officials coming out of the penalty box. Coming on a little late to the party. That's what happens when you're not here on time and... I believe some uh, kids a little bit too eager still having a teddy bear out in front. I believe Susie there was, uh, was, you know, maybe arguing for a penalty for things being thrown on the ice. Official had, official having none of that, Brooks. They even dropped the puck while Susie's making his way to the bench and a big hit laid on 
by Justin Coachman on to Brendan Riley. Ivoshkin with control over the puck, and he will throw it up for his center, Austin Thompson. Thompson toe-dragging around one man, but the second man will block it on the way through. It is Tyson Kirkby, who is credited with the goal, his 13th of the season. It's a power play goal and a two-on-one going the other way. Corgan throws a wrist shot, and Shepard did make a blocker save on that one. Bozerin, save made by Shepard and the referee. Quick on the whistle as it goes off of the mask of Shepard, and Shepard doing the smart thing there and just flinging it off his head so he knows that he gets the whistle. 10.48 left to go here well, Brooks, in this was, one. That was an excellent job by the official spotting that. What happened was as the guy ran the net, he, uh, they, bumped, uh, they bumped his mask a little bit, and it started to come off. Anytime the mask a little bit comes off, the official immediately kills the play. And recognizing this, he made sure that basically to kill his helmet so that he could get that call because sometimes officials aren't as quick to react or maybe watching something else. Quick and the quick thinking by Binghamton Blackers were there to make sure that mask came off. Take a look at the high injury replay. A big hit laid on by Justin Coachman as Brendan Riley gets sent down to the ice. Black Bears throw it out of the offensive end. And now Anderson with cutting. The extra forward tonight seeing some ice time here. Anderson lost his stick. And in fact, the puck bounces off of his driftwood right back over to the captain, Jake Schultz. Schultz back over to Coachman, but Coach has it hop his stick at the last second. Good display of stick handling by Coachman. He just has to push the puck in, though, as the Black Bears were on a delayed offsides. And Cutting just got a three-for-one special on Bellard, got him down in the corner. Then as he was coming back off the ice, caught him and another player from the Delaware Thunder Lackham. Black Bears trying to take away the loose puck, and Cutting is the high forward on the four check here. Apologies for the delays on Fox 1430 as we continue to play on here. A little bit of technical difficulties as Anderson throws it back across for Schultz. It stays in play off of the glass. Schultz. Almost getting called for a trip, but luckily for him, Delaware stays on their feet. Jurich and Yates together. Jurich waiting for somebody to come down. He throws the puck and might have bounced off of the face of Oganezov. Walters, a slap shot put on from the point. Merkel does a good job of holding it in at the line. Rich shot out in front. Where's the puck? Kirby from his knees. Save made by Martin. Excellent Boy, that save would have been. by Martin Brooks. Right in front of his cage. Kirby falling to his knees. And that last one through traffic that he just melted down. We're headed to commercial, 9.26 left to go here. Black Bears up by two, and they have a 3-1 advantage thanks to Tyson Kirkby, power play goal. Don't go anywhere, folks. You're listening to Black Bears Hockey on Fox Welcome back to the action here. Brooks Hill with Alex Jones coming out of the media timeout. Black Bears and Thunder find themselves in a 3-1 hockey game in favor of the hometown Binghamton Black Bears as we try to get back up on the radio here. We want to thank you for listening in on YouTube right now as we continue to truck along here. Black Bears trying to circle the puck down low as Tyson Kirkby in control over it. And now they throw it down the length of the ice and Shepard will just let it go. It doesn't make the icing line. Goes back the other way and Kirkby, excuse me, that's Gavin Yates getting into a little bit of a scuffle and Yates with a swing going the other way and looks like Yates is gonna be headed to the penalty box back in his first game. He's not too happy. 
with um, Delaware right there as we try to. It's an unfortunate one, Brooks, but not a, not a smart penalty for Yates. It, we're really keeping them apart here. Jurich is getting into it with Alex Tabaco, and Yates just gave him a two-hander right there. It's an unfortunate penalty, Brooks. It's going to send Delaware on the power play. So it looks like it's going to be a two-minuter, I think. I, I'm not sure, Brooks. 8.41 left to go here. Again, apologies for our fans on the radio side of things. We're trying to get back up on the air. And Brooks cleared down the ice uh, to the opposite end. Binghamton able to quickly get a change as Delaware brings the puck back up. Delaware driving down the left wing. Drives around the neck for a power play and off the stick of Delaware, skips the puck down ice all the way to the Delaware end. Binghamton not looking for a change, got two cherry pickers in their own zone. Delaware brings the puck up. Chris Corgan trying to handle, loses his stick handle a bit. Pucks pops up in the air. Corgan's able to get back on it, however. Down to Weaver. Back up to DeBacco, my apologies. Shot on net, tipped at the last minute. Schultz tries to get it out, unfortunately tipped away and it's held in the zone. DeBacco has the puck at the top of the zone, who this all started with. Schultz able to get the puck out of the blue, and Delaware has to reset their power, uh, power play. A Good bit, check. A big hit put on by Austin Thompson right there. Thank you, Alex, for covering as we try to work through the issues on the radio. It's probably gonna have to wait till we get to another commercial. We have 50 seconds left to go in the Northeastern Striping Corporation penalty kill. Gavin Yates giving a two minute minor for a slash. Not too happy with that one from Gavin, but a little bit of frustration sitting in in his first game back, and now Thunder centering past Susie out in front, sends it way high of the target. That was a golden opportunity for 18 in white, and he's gonna want that one back to Baco now. Drop it in, down low, deflected off of the high glass, and Coachman slaps it around the boards, but Wilson holds it in at the line. Delaware in the midst of a line change. Kirby didn't know where it was. Wilson finds the center of the ice, throws a wish shot again, high of the target, and Gafferoff spinning, in a cycle right now down low, looking for somebody to pass to. Instead, gets it down low to Amatitis. Amatitis circles the wagon. Five and seconds now, left on the penalty, Brooks. Yep, and Oganezov throws a wrist shot. Shepard makes the save, and Yates is coming out of the penalty box. A home run opportunity, but it's batted down by Oganezov, who might have just saved a goal as Yates was camped out at the blue line, ready to skate away scot-free. Yeah, Yates almost gets that puck over the blue line. Oganezov's able to stick his stick up, tap that down at the last second, and then deflects the puck into Yates for the offsides. Puck's going out to center ice. Looks like we have some confusion, Brooks, if it's gonna be a media timeout or not as the keeper heads to his bench to uh, grab some water real quick. Martin quickly retreats, headed back to his own area. They bring the linesman in too to find out where this puck is gonna be. It's intentionally played with a high stick to take away a breakaway, but it looks like it will stay in the neutral zone right out in front of the Black Bear bench. Powell communicating with the officials, trying to figure it out. They're saying that the high stick was played in the neutral zone rather than in Delaware zone. Powell will wrist it in off the face off. And now going the other way for Mac Lewis. Lewis has it stripped away down low at the goal line. And Pavel tries to play it in at the line. They say off sides. And now it's brought out of the zone. Black Bears can touch back up. Fitzgerald wraps it around the boards. Behind and stopped by Martin. Here set up. Logan is off down low. O'Reilly now with the puck. Off the glass and out. And Fitzgerald goes down to a knee. Throws it across the ice for Mac Lewis. Lewis will just dump it in and chase after it with Anderson and cutting. Martin wraps it around Lewis, who was holding the boards. And look out, going the other way is O'Reilly, but it bounces off of his blade. A little bit too far out in front and cutting. Going through Oganezov and a little bit of a slap from Oganezov on the way through from cutting. And cutting will get off of the ice. And Delaware in control of the puck. Oganezov skates away with it. Jurich holding the line. Let's Oganezov just kind of skate by free. Oganezov still with the puck. Wrist shot put on. Second attempt swallowed up by Shepard. Buck becomes available as they whack at it. And Oganezov is shaken up behind the net. Oganezov went hard into the boards, bro. 
He drove the net hard there, got upended by the laydown block, and just went into an awful angle into the boards. Never like to see that, folks. 5.23 left to go here in this one. Just a few seconds away from a media timeout. And Oganazov just trying to do his best to get around Fitzgerald and just goes flying into the MT Bank Dasher. Here's the Oganazov does get up on his own and hopefully he'll be able to continue on later on in this game. Binghamton wins the draw, Brooks. Merkel all the way on the opposite side. JT Walters throws it up ice, tapped into the attacking zone. Binghamton's Black Bears hold the puck deep. Mac Lewis is just swinging around. Shot wide of the goal by Tyson Kirkby. Kirkby plays in front for Lewis, or plays in front for... Try to get Yates down on one Yates. knee. Like a first baseman trying to pick it out of the ground. Delaware goes the other way. And Tyler Jerk skates away with the puck, though. He's crossing the line two on three, waiting for a trailer. Yates tries to go between his legs a little bit too cute, and the Delaware Thunder go the other way. Rasmus Ass, along with the captain. Susie, turnaround pass. Nobody's home for Delaware. And Kirkby, head up. We'll just glide this one out into the neutral zone and throw it short of the icing line. And we'll go the other way, and Wilson takes control of it and sets it up for Dennis Gafferoff, who has the one goal so far in the game for Delaware. Wilson in center ice, crosses the line on sides. Back to Amatitis, low angle shot, easily saved by Shepard. Amatitis, though, gets the rebound back on his stick. Gafferoff will just circle the faceoff dot, turn it over to Ivoshkin. Ivoshkin, a lot of speed, number eight has, but he gets muscled down to the ice and takes a hit afterwards. And again, J.C. Moritz is going back to the penalty box. He's not happy about it. And the referee's first indication was boarding. Brooks is not going to be happy about it. He hit Ivashkin directly in the head there. An unfortunate accident as he tried to finish his check while Ivashkin was on the ice. But he, he put his head directly into the ice. No call for that in the modern game of hockey, Brooks. And they're going to call that 10 times out of 10. We're going to go to timeout once again. 3.57 left to go here. Black Bears headed back on the power play, looking to add more after these messages on Fox Sports 14.30 in Binghamton. Stalling for it. 
and this got put on. I believe I was blocked on the way through by Lewis. Logan Rakoff with the carry here, throws it off of the glass and out of play. And the linesman very quickly agreeing with the referee that he was pushed off the high glass and his hands thrown into the stands. Actually, Ed, that was Lee Jr. who tackled him on the play. Actually, Brooks, I believe it ended up in the penalty box uh, in with the man who committed the boarding himself, which is the ultimate irony with the first power play coming out there. First power play unit back out on the ice is Kyle Powell. Throws it over to Jurich. Jurich back over to Powell. Those two trade places. And Jurich throws a one-timer. Goaltender makes the save. Martin tries to poke it one up high in the air. They don't want to give any more batted out of midair in the goal column for the Black Bears. Apologies for the audio on the YouTube side of things. We were dealing with some radio issues back in the iHeart studio. Just now we got them all sorted out. Black Bear still on the power play. Powell skates in, and it gets snared out of the air, and now we're gonna have some people going for a tussle. Tyson Kirkby dropping the mitts. And Alex Susie and Tyson Kirkby going at it. Susie's just blindly chucking nuts as they get wrestled down to the ground. Kirkby took exception to a pull, uh, maybe a late hit on Powell. And Kirkby standing up for his teammates as both of them are headed to the locker room with two minutes left to go. Yeah, Brooks, it was a good round there. Uh, Sequel weight class. Kirkby got some hard, quick shots out early, and I'm going to give him the W in that one. Sess well, Cecil ended up on top and landed a couple big ones. I got to give it for Kirkby for his total work there. Great tilt on both sides. Got to stick up for your guy. And got to love Kirkby immediately in the, pre in the penalty box. He knows he's sitting down for five minutes. He immediately takes the jersey off. Well, he's got to get re all the equipment readjusted. Got to figure out what's going on underneath. Make sure everything's correct. All right, so Kirkby with a little bit of a late shove on Dubaco, and then Kirkby gets a hit from behind from Susie. And then Susie and Kirkby just start going at it. Kirkby goes down to a knee and gets back up as you look on Heinz Energy Replay. And then they continue to throw punches at each other while both of them are tangled up down low on the ice. And Kirkby's actually taking off his entire shoulder pads. And now he's just sit sitting in the penalty box with his undershirt on. Yeah, Brooks, it's one of those things. Maybe he's a little hot after that contest. It was a good tilt on both sides. And Kirkby's going to have some time to reflect on that for five minutes. Honestly, I'm surprised they just didn't send both of them already down to the locker room ahead of time. Looks like the faceoff's going to stay in the offensive zone for the Black Bears, Brooks. I think that's what they're trying to find out from the officials. Also wondering if Powell's talking about, about a possible penalty for Susie coming in after the play and popping the lid off, which is, from my understanding, a penalty in the Federal Hockey League now is purposely taking the equipment off. And they're gonna bring the face off into the neutral zone. And in fact, it looks like. Looks like they're sending somebody extra to the box for a penalty here. Um, it's on number one, which does not exist currently for the Black Bears. Uh, number one is Chris Paulin. And Chris Paulin is the backup goaltender. And it looks like the Black Bears are gonna get an extra penalty here. Jurich is skating his way over to the penalty box. And it, we are going to go down to four on four. So the power play is over for the Black Bears. They go to one for two on the night. 2.09 left to go here in a two goal contest. Fitzgerald set play off the faceoff, uses his speed, trying to get it in down low behind the defense. Asp didn't see it. And Anderson stopping and starting gets held up for a mere second down low. And now we go the other way. Delaware trying to camp out at the line. Moritz calling for a change, thrown down the ice. And now we go to the other side as Asp. It's four on four. No, five on four, excuse me. So they give Kirkby two for unsportsmanlike. How about that? Gafferoff, wrist shot, save made by Shepard. Rebound fanned on by Wilson, and Bussell takes his time. Cycling back, gets it to the open man, and Coachman now will just throw it down the length of the ice. Black Bears wavering a few extra seconds off of the clock here in period number two. So after all of that, Black Bears get taken off of the power play. 
and now they're on the Northeastern Striping Corporation penalty kill. They're one for one on the night. Centering pass fanned on by Weber, and now Schultz skates away. Schultz trying to go for Parker cross ice. It's a turnover at the blue line going the other way. Dropped back for Wilson. Wilson, wrist shot, save made by Shepard. He doesn't know where it is. It was in between the blocker and the shoulder, and he melts it down with 48 seconds left to go. Smart play, it's gonna be 39 seconds left on the penalty kill for the Black Bears. Kirkby and so Susie headed back to their opposite side. Susie trying to get his guys going on the bench as Kirkby heads back and salutes the fans. Let's see if, uh, how Delaware takes this power play after that fight, see if there's a little energy back in them. 39 seconds left to go in the penalty that's being served by Tyler Jurich. Kirkby and Susie making their way to the locker room. Now, Brooks, an interesting thing about having Tyler Jurich in for the in serve the penalty is I think Binghamton's trying to get one of those Hail Mary passes to themselves once the penalty releases. And that could be true. Bozerin throws a wrist shot wide of the target. Man taken out in front. Shepard trying to find it in the blue paint, and he covers up. And that could have been dangerous for the Black Bears. That's how they scored one last night on Chris Paulin. Puck was just available in the blue paint. I'll tell you what, I think Schultz home. there, Brooks, just saved a goal on Corrigan, tying it up, taking him to the ice, making sure he did not get a shot. Schultz, wearing the C on his sweater, just wraps him up and says, no, you're not getting that second chance opportunity. And I think Corrigan had a wide open net if Schultz is not there. Just got to look at it on our Heinz Energy replay for our friends on YouTube. 35 seconds left to go here as it looks like the off-ice officials are still sorting some stuff out between the penalty box. Uh, MJ Merkel looks like he just got kicked out of the game, Brooks. Now he's getting I, over to the bench. Well, the official was sending pointings to the, to the locker room, which is an interesting distinction. Or we'll have to talk about this once it comes through on the official stat sheet during the Excite Motorsports second intermission. Black Bears are still on the penalty kill. And this, I kind of wish this was almost like the NBA basketball on ESPN, like where the referee comes over to the scorer's table, talks into the microphone, and gives everybody at home a clear picture of what's going on. And now Brett Parker comes off of the ice, and this turns into a five-on-three all of a sudden. Looks like we're going to... Wow, Coach Gary Gill just got ejected from the game, Brooks. And Chicken Dance comes on right on cue. 30 seconds left to go. And DeBacco skates away with it. Five on three. The most important thing for the Black Bears is to get to the locker room now with a two-goal lead intact. 20 seconds left to go. Amatitis inside the faceoff dog. Going for Gafferoff. High slot down low to Wilson. Centering pass is blocked on the way through by Schultz. Five Thir seconds left on the first penalty, Brooks. Amatitis over into the faceoff dot. Thank you, Alex Corgan. Circling into the high slot. Out in front, and Wilson sent it wide. Five seconds left to go. Schultz ties up his man on the board. That's the best case scenario for the Black Bears. The horn sounds. The five on three is over. And we have a lot of unpacking to do in this one in the Excite Motorsports second period intermission report. Black Bears a little dazed and confused here in the final two minutes of the period as they skate off to the locker room. They have a two goal advantage. Shots on goal now 30 to 20. A much better period from Delaware. And we got a lot of talk about and trying to sort this one out and painting a picture for the third period. Don't go anywhere, folks. We have no idea what is going to happen going forward. And now we have time for our intermission commercial before the chuck -a puck Don't go anywhere, folks. Three to one, Black Bears lead on Fox Sports 1430 in Binghamton. The Binghamton Black Bears are back in action Friday, December 16th against the Watertown Wolves. Puck drop, 7 p.m. It is summer in December, so wear your best summer wardrobe. Get your tickets now at BinghamtonBlackBears.com or call the office 607-722-7367. Fans, it's that time of the year again. Binghamton Black Bears holiday packs are now on sale. For $80, you receive four ticket vouchers, four t-shirts, and an ornament. 
and makes for the perfect holiday present. Order online at blackbearshop.com or visit the third floor hockey office. And happy holidays from the Binghamton Black Bears. Now it's time to take a look back from the previous Tully's Good Times with Coach Show. Make sure to subscribe to the Binghamton Black Bears YouTube page so you can catch every show. Join us Tuesday, December 13th. Join myself and head coach Gary Gill and the entire Black Bear squad as we talk everything hockey for the hour. Come out on December 13th for the next Tully's Good Times with Coach Show. Welcome back in for the edition of the Tully's Good Times with Coach Show. I'm Brooks Hill, now joined by Black Bears forward. Austin Thompson and before we talk to Austin we just want to let you know that trivia night is coming up this Friday night against the Watertown Wolves first time that the Black Bears will take on the Wolves this season and we will start at seven o'clock both Friday and Saturday night Saturday night is country night and Friday is Girl Scout night and trivia night so if you're a big fan of trivia or you have a daughter in the Girl Scouts make sure you grab your tickets now at Binghamton Black Bears Dot com. They're still available, but they are going fast. Or you can call the office at 607-722-7367 today and go ahead and secure your tickets for this upcoming weekend. Uh, Austin, and you're back from your injury. You spent some time away from the ice. And how did it feel just to now have a plethora of games underneath your belt now coming back from your injury? Yeah, you know, it's uh, always tough coming back from an injury. No one wants to get hurt. Um, but like you said, playing a couple more games, getting it back, my feet back underneath me, it's pretty good right now. And uh, thankful that it kind of happened early in the year as opposed to later. So, And I have to imagine that it felt really good coming in on, excuse me, on Wednesday night back on Thanksgiving Eve as I quickly just get my stuff back up here, scoring your first goal back from injury. And is it kind of like almost like a basketball player? Is you just need to see one go through the bottom of the net? Did you kind of feel the same thing that you just needed to see the puck go in one time for you to try to get back onto that pace that you started the season with? Yeah, of course. You know, it's always nice to see the puck go in the back of the net and uh, hopefully just keep it going and pick up where I left off before that injury happened. And, uh, you know, we talked to Colin about the travel on the weekend. Um, I can say that you were probably acting a little bit more normal on the bus ride uh, you were enjoying some netflix and uh since we're keeping it light a little bit here tonight you sat behind me on the bus w what is on austin thompson's binge watch right now on netflix hulu paramount w what what's going through what are you seeing on the screen well there's like a the couple you got the disney plus or the netflix and especially that port here on drive you know 12 hours on the bus uh, i finished the whole season of that wednesday show on netflix Okay, and would you recommend it to somebody? Yeah, it was pretty good. And if you're an Adams Family fan, for sure check it out. Okay. Now, are these all stuff that you're like, oh, hey, like I know I have a long bus ride ahead of time, and I'm going to go ahead and download these, and I'm just going to force myself to watch through? Or are you just a streaming guy, and you're running up a phone bill the entire uh, 12 hours that we were on the road? No, definitely uh, planned ahead, especially with, from college and all the traveling we did for both sports there at Davenport. Um, definitely the download section for Netflix was a big help. Yeah, and also, you know, we weren't playing too far away from where you grew up. And for myself, it was my first time to Michigan and seeing all the signs for Canada. I even got a text message from Verizon Wireless saying, welcome to Canada and, you know, sign up for an international phone plan like day by day. And uh, were you able to see any friends or family this weekend being that close back uh, to your hometown? Yeah, the girlfriend and her family came up to watch me play uh, back at college. They would try to make their way up to those games. I mean, unfortunately, my parents were sick, so... They couldn't make the trip, and I know they really wanted to be there. But it's just nice being closer to home and seeing that uh, red and white maple leaf flag. And when we say that close to home, I think it close is like, a, like an understatement. I tried skipping rocks across the uh, St. Clair River and trying to make it into Canada. I never made it. I, I got about halfway one time. But we, essentially, like, Port Huron really is right there on the Canadian border. We have the bridge that goes over top of the hotel that we were staying at. And you can see people going in and out of the United States and going through customs, everything like that. And it was just, you know, a little eye-opening for me. We also had some great weather uh, up there in Michigan, around 50 degrees both days. So it's not like we were walking around in the snow all bundled up between the restaurants, the rink, and the hotel. What was your favorite part of the weekend aside from winning Friday night's game? Was it, you know, the hotel that we were staying at, hanging out on the bus, you know, at the team dinners or breakfast? Honestly, you're getting some Tim Hortons. It's been a while since I had Timmy's, and I know it's the state side isn't as close to Canada, but 
You got to do what you got to do. Now, I've heard a lot about Tim Hortons, just, you know, trying to do my research on hockey and all the content that I can consume. People always talking about Tim Hortons. What makes Tim Hortons such a good spot for her to go before a game? Uh, just root from her childhood, I guess, from the 6 a.m., 7 a.m. skates when you're five years old and your dad or mom was getting a double-double, kind of just grow around it. And so it's a go-to classic for coffees in Canada. Okay. And is it still better up in Canada or does it taste the same back here in the States? There's a small difference, I think. So it's way better in Canada. Okay. That's what I tell people between Pepsi and Coke, but they're still yet to believe me about it. But that's okay. I consume three Pepsis a day. So I can definitely tell a difference. Uh, we talked about with uh, Coach Gill, but let's talk about it from a player's perspective. How do you think that, A, yourself, and B, the team handled having three games in a seven-day span, or three games in four days, essentially, for the first time this season? Yeah, you know, I think it's a little different, um, especially at a pro level. Those games take a toll on the bodies, and I think going – the Wednesday game is a tough game to bounce back, but, I mean, like we said, that – Friday game was obviously much better for us and got the win and I don't want to make excuses but I felt like that Sunday game maybe a couple guys heavy legs long road trip I mean it happens but I think with that under our belt now we should be fine moving forward and ex knowing what to expect in this situation. Do you think all that travel can add up and as you said like on the Saturday night game it can add up like for the bus legs and just fatigue start to set in I was kind of wondering from my point of view that maybe hey like the adrenaline like gets you through like the friday night game and being like okay like we're here we're in a hockey game oh we have the lead and now let's secure the victory or is it more of just a thing it was okay like hey you know friday night was just our night and saturday wasn't no of course i mean adrenaline's a big help in this sport um like that friday game uh luckily we got down the thursday so we got our morning skate on friday and i think that adrenaline carried us for the friday night game and then Obviously, playing again Saturday, not so much a 24-hour swing, but close enough was, uh, I think, a little challenging because, you know, like you said, we already played two games in the week. We had the long bus trip. I mean, it happens, but you just got to find a way to bounce through it and try to get the job done for the fans. Well, the next time that the Black Bears will play uh, three games in a four-day span, they will actually play three games in three days when the Carolina Thunderbirds come up later in January. The Black, or excuse me, the Black Bears and the Thunderbirds will play Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. All three of those games will be inside Vision Veterans Memorial Arena. And do you think that maybe this weekend can help prepare the Black Bears for playing three games in a row a little bit down the road? Yeah, for sure. And like you said, our next three game, those next three game stretch we have is going to be at home. So obviously, guys are going to go back to their own homes and probably do what they do every night before instead of being in a hotel and trying to do their uh, routine or whatever it is it might be to help them prepare for the next day. So, I mean, I think we're we'll handle it. Well, it's good that you guys are you know blessed, maybe cursed at the time. There's like, oh hey, like that was a lot of travel, a lot of heavy days. But now you got to think of it as a blessing. It's like, okay hey, we know what it's like to play games like this back to back to back. And, you know, knowing how the playoffs kind of went last year for Binghamton, it might be going the same way here uh, later on in the season. And the more you guys do it now, I think it will help prepare your bodies in the future. But that's just my two cents. Let's talk about uh, the Watertown Wolves. They come into town on Friday and Saturday for a two-game swing. They are 5-6-0. and oh. That's good enough for third place in the Empire Division with 12 points. And you guys have not played Watertown yet this year. Is it a little odd seeing a team for a first time and a, and a divisional opponent, rather, too, uh, this far into the season? Yeah, you know, it's – I mean, there's obviously film and that we go over and YouTube it, games and highlights or whatnot, but it's always different. Um, I mean, especially for me being a new guy, I mean, every team we play – is always going to be new pretty much to me. So Understandable. Um, you can't really look too deep into it. It's, at the end of the day, it's a hockey game, and you're going your five versus their five, and you have a job to do. And it's just a matter of getting the job done. doesn't matter who is in front of you. What has been something that you guys have been talking about at practice this week? I know it's only been a couple of days since we got back from Michigan, but is there anything that you know the leadership group on this team or the coaches have been – you know, explain to you guys about, hey, like we're going to try to implement this better or this is like our main focus as we attack Friday and Saturday's games? I just think going forward, we're trying to get more physical. I mean, today at practice, we did a lot of battle drills and obviously it's fun too, gets the boys fired up. So I think we just got to pick that up a little bit and what we're leaning towards the leadership group is the same thing. And at the end of the day, we just got to work hard. 
All right, Austin. Well, thank you for spending some time with us here on a Tuesday night at Tully's. We appreciate it, and we want to wish you best of luck coming up on Friday and Saturday, and we're glad that you're back from injury. Yes, thank you. I'm glad I'm back, too. If you're looking to install a beautiful, durable, and handcrafted countertop, call Atlas James Construction. The Southern Tier's most trusted stone fabrication will design and install your dream countertop and let you choose from a premium selection of natural stones like marble, granite, or quartzite. Stone or granite countertops starting as low is $35 per square foot installed. Schedule your free quote and receive a free sink with your countertop project. Call 607-275-5495. Getting your hands on an all-new CF Moto side-by-side or four-wheeler is now easier than ever at ExciteMotorsports.com. Purchase your next power sports vehicle with our new, easy, and quick online buying experience. Browse inventory on ExciteMotorsports.com. Buy. Get approved for financing and e-sign online right from your phone. Ride. Have your new power sports vehicle delivered to your home the next day at no extra charge. Browse. Buy. Ride. Fun starts here at ExciteMotorsports.com. Whether you're a high school or college athlete or a weekend warrior, Guthrie is the area's premier sports medicine program, offering injury evaluation, concussion management, physical therapy, and more. With a full team of providers across New York and Pennsylvania offering same or next day appointments, Guthrie gets you back in the game as quickly as possible. Call the Guthrie Sports Medicine team today at 866-GUTHRIE or learn more at guthrie.org slash sportsmed. All about you make me think of good things. Good things. Like coming tempers down. Good things. And passing them around. So stand up and cheer. The last gonna be a good thing. Cheer a good natured Canadian Pilsner. Magic 1017. Best radio station. Keeps getting better. Better music selection. <laughs> Makes me feel better. Number one for music and fun. It's like the best ever. Magic 1017, 100% local. Are you looking for a new place to live? Lofts at JC is the official housing partner of the Binghamton Black Bears and the only luxury housing provider offering both two and three bedroom units fully furnished for a modern living lifestyle. Lofts at JC is centrally located in the heart of the Tri-Cities area located at 128 Grand Avenue in Johnson City. Housing applications are accepted online at loftsatjc.com. Once again, that's loftsatjc.com. A wreck is a wreck. An arrest is an arrest. Alcohol, cough syrup, Painkillers, sleeping pills, it doesn't matter. Impaired is impaired, and it will be prosecuted. Going out tonight? Your local police will be out too. Don't drive, get a ride. Brought to you by your New York State Stop DWI program. 1025, The Vault. Classic hits, 1025, The Vault. We are 100% local.
Welcome back to the action for the third period. And the third period is brought to you by our friends over at American Standard Heating and Air Condition. And they are built to a higher standard. Time for the Black Bears to dig deep, Alex. They're without their head coach, Gary Gill, who will be watching the rest of this one from the locker room or his office where the TV is set up. As we see a couple of Heinz Energy replays here getting us set for the third period. What's going to be the key for the Black Bears to handle the emotion here in the final 20 minutes? It's just dealing with those special teams. You're down a man to start the period, 125 left in that penalty. You're going to have to just get after it on your special teams. Take advantage of every opportunity given you. Um, as we see right now in the Heinz Energy replay, Kirkby put a puck in the back of the net during that period on a power play and you, you're just going to have to ride out this penalty, make sure Delaware doesn't get the opportunity, and any power any power plays or man advantages you have going forward, you're going to have to take care of. That'll bury this team in the third period, Brooks. Crowd gets a little excited as Tyson Kirkby makes his way back out into the penalty box from the locker room. He still has a couple of minutes to sit down. Him and Alex Susi got five for fighting. Eight penalties between the two sides, primarily more for the Black Bears. They lost their head coach, and now it'll be up to Tom Reynolds barking out the orders for the team dressed in black and try to get through this one. They have a two-goal cushion as we get ready for period number three. The Thunder are already out on the ice, and the Black Bears are trying to figure out who's going to go out for this opening penalty kill. They have a minute 25 to get it back to five on five. Yeah, Brooks, uh, Sousey and... Kirkby have until I believe it's going to be about 1730 left in the third period 1730 left in the third period they'll be eligible to get back on the ice by that point MJ Merkel will be back on the ice as well um, it'll be interesting to see how the five on, how the power play works for Delaware without Alex Susi, their captain out there it looks like the off ice officials still sorting through some of the penalties just making sure everybody knows when they are going to be released Puck is dropped, and we are underway for the American Standard Heating and Air Conditioning third period. Black Bears find themselves up by two, and Wilson crosses the line on sides. Delaware's on the power play. They are 0 for 5 so far on the night. They start it behind their own blue line, and DeBacco, a puck moving defenseman as Anderson comes away with it. Gafferoff now circling. The blue line comes back to Wilson, and Delaware not able to enter the zone cleanly. It's just slapped out of the zone by Walters all the way behind the goal line. And Delaware starting again. Austin Weber lays it over for Gafferoff. Gafferoff tries to skate around the captain, and the puck gets wristed around the boards to the open man. Wilson tried to slap it in down low, but in fact it works out better as Lewis overskated it to Baco. Back over to Wilson at the outside of the faceoff. Dot down low, Gafferoff. Wilson, plenty of space. Wrist shot, save made by Shepard. Puck becomes available, and a penalty is called by the referee behind the play. And it is a cross-checking call to Brett Parker trying to clean up out in front. And the Black Bears are headed to a Northeastern Striping Corporation five on three. Well, honestly, Brooks, Delaware is incredibly lucky. They didn't get caught with a slash. Mac Lewis at the top of the zone. DeBacco tried to slap the puck out of the air. Caught Mac Lewis right on the wrist. Easily could have been a slash call for the Delaware Thunder. First penalty of the period. Horn sounds right as we get ready. And Shepard melts it down, 18.55. The horn goes off. Scorekeepers not ready yet to drop the puck. And Brett Gotta wait till the penalty gets up on the board, Brooks. Just a little bit of miscommunication with our timekeepers in the booth, getting those numbers correct, making sure we all get those numbers correct and the exact number of time that came off the penalty uh, gets put on the clock. Five on three for the next 30 seconds. MJ Merkel will be the first man out of the penalty box. Serve in the penalty for, I believe, Coach Gary Gill there yep. on the bench minor. Looks like they're trying to figure out the exact time to take out the penalty right now. 
It's sitting at two minutes for Brett Parker. I believe about three, four seconds came off the clock. Probably gonna adjust this to 156 if I am correct with my mental math, but it looks like they might keep it at two. Ball start on Delaware and that'll force Houston Wilson out of the face off zone and that might be a benef benefit for the Black Bears, but the fans growing restless here as they are employing the referees to just put the puck on the ice. I take, I take back everything what I said, Brooke, about le about the officials letting the players play so far in this game in the first Face period. off one back by Delaware. Now DeBacco inside is the blue line. Loads up a one-timer for Weber. Save made by Shepard. And rebound is cleaned up by Thompson. And it's thrown down the ice. 15 seconds left to go on the five-on-three penalty kill for the Black Bears. And Austin Thompson takes it away. No quarter given at the line, and that'll just about do it. MJ Merkel standing up and ready at the door. Tom, Will or excuse me, Tom Reynolds with his arm up in the air. Merkel forced to join the play as the puck comes right to the penalty box, adding another defenseman to the play. Three defensemen out on the ice now for the Black Bears. Merkel is a forward in this scenario. Gafferoff fanning on a one-timer looking for goal number two as he controls the puck. A traditional five on four for the next minute ten. Shepard finds the loose puck, Schultz off of the glass and out of the zone, and a big line change coming up for the penalty killers as they get four fresh bodies out on the ice. JT Walters just lost his mouth guard too there, Brooks, as he came on the ice. Merkel gets to the boards, which is perfect for them because that's way too many defensemen on the ice for a penalty kill. You never want the, even, dis, the number of forwards to defenders being unevenly distributed on the ice, especially on the penalty kill. Oganez off with one hand, tries to skate with it through center ice. He has his ice impeded, but Delaware touches up on sides. Heavy hit laid on by Mac Lewis. Fans on his first clearing attempt, but Kyle Powell will clean up the second one. Black Bears have a chance, two on one. Centering pass out in front for Anderson. Backhand, he draws a penalty, and Delaware touches up. And the Black Bears do a good job of killing off all of the penalties. And now we're going back to four on four for 23 seconds and then the Black Bears will have a five on four opportunity. Yeah, Oganezov doesn't think he, really arguing the official on this one, thinks he did not hook him, um, but he's gonna call it as he went to, the, as the Black Bears drove the net and Oganezov went hard into the boards. I guess he'll get a couple minutes to sit that down. I thought at Brooks at this point, the fighting would be released. This was about five minutes from when that happened. So it'll be interesting to see at what point do they get Tyson Kirkby out of the box to join the power play? A uh, two minute hook to Eric Oganez off. Black Bears throw, the, excuse me, win the face off. This is not icing, or it is icing, not a penalty kill as it's four on four and I believe a little bit of a mental lapse by JC Moritz as he throws it down the length of the ice and now the penalty is coming out of the box. Alex Susi and Tyson Kirkby returning to the bench and the crowd to gets a excited. raucous cheer from the crowd Brooks I'm gonna guess in 11 seconds Brooks will probably see Tyson Kirkby out on the ice Yates the center wins it to himself puts on a low angle shot and Martin makes a chest save on the attempt Black Bears lose control of the puck and it's flinged out of the zone on the Yates shot as Delaware was the first team to the rebound Powell with it behind his net, he's pressured by Weber and now Anderson skating away, cross sides over to Yates. Yates on sides, drops it back for Jurich, a little bit too soft on that pass to set up a one-timer for Jurich, but instead he will sauce it over to Powell. Powell outside the left wing faceoff dot, back over to Anderson. Five on four now for the Black Bears and you called it, Alex Kirkby out on the ice. Puck still available, JC Moritz just taking up time and Weber will chip it away. Powell will recollect it as Shepard sets it up on a tee for his defenseman. Some fresh penalty killers getting out on the ice for Delaware as the breakout begins once again. Tyson Kirkby crosses the red line, now the blue line on sides. On the backhand, circles the net, throws it back to the point in the form of Powell. Kirkby over to Jurich, cross size pass, top of the umbrella, Kirkby over to Powell. One timer looking for a tip from Yates out in front and Martin had to stand on his toes, make that save as it goes right into the trapper's mitt of the goalkeeper. Excellent save by Martin there, tracking the puck. It was a low angle shot, shot along the ice hard by Powell and then tipped into the air. 
by Yates. Yates did an excellent job tracking that puck, but an even better save by Martin grabbing that puck as he had already committed down the butterfly low to stop that puck. Black Bears have 42 seconds left to go on the Eric Oganezov hooking penalty. And Taylor Cutting seeing some power play time for the first time this evening. He has the puck down low, trying to chip it out of the skates of DeBacco. He gets it back to Thompson. Thompson, wrist shot, puck becomes available and off of the post. Mac Lewis looking for his first multi-goal game of the season. And he beat the goaltender, but he couldn't beat the iron. Now we go back the other way. Thompson, center ice over for Lewis. Lewis touching up and cutting. Didn't know where the puck was. The Black Bears hold it in the zone. Thompson goes D to D with Schultz. And they work it down low to Brett Parker. Ivashkin noticeably missing from the second power play unit. Five seconds left to go in the penalty. Back over to Lewis and out of the box comes Oganezov. Penalty is over. Thompson out in front. Backhander cutting out cutting in front. In he the scores. Back of the it goes through the blue paint and Taylor Cutting cashes in his first goal as a Binghamton Black Bear. Yeah, the Butcher kept his stick on the ice. That rebound bounced twice through the crease. The puck lands right on his stick and the Butcher puts it in the back of the net for his first goal as a Binghamton Black Bear. And it's the all important Burger King Burger goal and all the fans are going home happy tonight with a voucher for our free cheeseburger thanks to our friends over at Burger King. It's not a power play goal, Alex, but it counts nonetheless. 4-1 Black Bears. Taylor Cutting with his first as a Black Bear. And yeah, as you can see on the Heinz Energy replay, Brooks, Cutting just does a great job planning himself outside the crease, setting a nice screen. Puck crosses the net. Lewis puts it in the middle, and then Taylor Cutting just buries it into the net for the Binghamton Black Bears burger goal. Taylor Cutting with his first of the season. Uh, Brett Parker, who was out of the lineup last night, picks up an assist. That's Parker's seventh assist of the season. And Austin Thompson with a secondary helper as well. That's an even strength goal at 4.09 of the third period. It's the third period, first goal of the period, and it's a burger goal brought to you by our friends over at Burger Team. The ultimate irony books that the Butchers serving up all the fans in attendance, some hamburgers. Cross ice dumping behind the red line and it's icing coming all the way back with 1442, but after a media timeout. Don't go anywhere folks, more to come here on Fox Sports 1430 in Binghamton. And the Black Bears looking to add on some more. Uh, they're up by three as they lead four to one. Shots on goal, Alex now. Binghamton 34, Delaware 23. All started 12 seconds in as Tyler Jurich deflected one in that sent the Teddy Bears on the ice. And this wrist shot was deflected out in front by Tyson Kirkby with a stick above the shoulders and touched up by Yates for a high sticking call. Well, Brooks, I think, too, it ended up actually being a assisted high stick. I think Kirkby had his stick underneath it, and Moritz just lifted that thing out of there and said, no, 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 I'm not going to give you another one of those. I'm look at that one, and Kirkby making contact with it, and looks like Merkel getting acquainted with some members on the bench, and Susie trying to come after JT Walters, and Walters is on the ice, and looks like the referees are separating them very quickly here on this one. And it looks like we might have some extracurriculars getting ready to take place in just a few seconds. A lot of conversation, Brooks, happening along that Delaware Thunder bench. Looks like Merkel's uh, calling out. Rasmus asked for a tilt. 
I believe he's actually directing to Susie, who's on the bench. Puck is in play. Nobody's dropped the gloves just quite yet. Merkel throws it off the boards, trying to find Tyler Jurich. Jurich throws it over for Yates, but this is off sides as he played the puck as Yates was already into the zone. This is coming back into the neutral zone. Would love to see the reverse angle for maybe the opposite side of the ice if we have a camera there on the Heinz Energy replay. See how that one kind of started out. But the puck is back in play. And now Merkel camped out right in front of the bench getting a, his money's worth. Maybe exchanging a few chirps to the Delaware bench as Oganezov will circle the net and drop it all the way back. Now some of the fans getting involved in the action. Here letting Delaware know what they think of him as O'Reilly crosses the line on side, steering it up. Out in front and Bazarin. Merkel giving a rough ride in the boards to O'Reilly. O'Reilly still with control of the puck. Center up for Bazarin. Save made by Shepard. And Jurich gets to the loose rebound. Throwing it over for Yates. And Yates looks a little tired, but now he has numbers going the other way. On his forehand, toe drag. Blocker save off the post. Brooks, that's as close to a goal as you can get without actually scoring. Powell throws a wrist shot and a blocker save made by Martin. Puck becomes available. And Weber skates out to neutral ice with it. Crossing the line now. They're on sides. Weber running out of real estate. He just drops it back off for Bosrin. Back to the defensive point, but cannot be held in by DeBacco. And it looks like four out of the five players for the Black Bears are getting off the ice. Only one staying on is Kyle Powell taking a run at DeBacco on the way through. Fitzgerald stopping and starting a smart play using the referee as a pick. Trying to find Bussell. Camped out at the blue line. Waiting up for Anderson. Anderson tried to beat his man to the front of the net but he couldn't catch up to it. Puck is still available, and it's now down low for Justin Movali. Movali sidesteps Mac Lewis, but Lewis will have control of the puck over to Bussell. Bussell at the top of the umbrella, down low for Kyle Powell. Behind the net, centering pass is off of the skate of Lewis, loaded out to center ice, and that's where Fitzgerald will paw it down. Skating in front of the bench, sidesteps two members of the Thunder. 12.35 left to go here as the Black Bears have a three-goal lead. Rossmus asks, Newly acquired for the Thunder, playing in his first two games this weekend. Had a point last night in his first game with the club as it's floated out to neutralize but kept in by Movali temporarily. Turnover, though, as Lewis, who I think is nearing the end of his shift, right in front of the Delaware bench, gets a rough ride. And here do the smart thing and just skate away as Kyle Powell was on the four check, and now he skates back to the bench. And Justin Coachman will come on and take his spot. Cutting with a takeaway, trying to come up with the loose puck the whole nine yards, but he can't that time. That would have been a highlight play for Taylor Cutting, who already has his first goal as a Black Bear here tonight, looking to add on some more. Schultz sidesteps a hit off the boards. He self-passes it to himself now behind the net, leaving it back for Thompson. Thompson to Parker. Wrist shot from a low angle, nobody home. Centering pass out in front, Cutting with another great A opportunity. Didn't get all of it. I might have caught on the end of the toe on that one. Parker sidesteps Asp, and Asp throws an elbow at Parker. Those two going at it with each other. Kept in at the line temporarily by Thompson, but Delaware skates out in the form of Gafferoff. Gafferoff with Corgan touching up, and Shepard holds on to it with 11-16 remaining in the third. Yeah, it was a quick grab by Shepard. Shepard decided just to kill it there, let him get a change. Schultz, I noticed on the back end of the play, ended up knocking out one of the defender's sticks. I believe it was Movali on the back end. And that stick ended all the way up in the Black Bears zone, Brooks. A little something you know, if sometimes camera doesn't catch that we catch at the live game. Face off becomes available. The Black Bears skate away with it. Gavin Yates, 12, dressed in black. Had it, and he fumbled it a little bit. Trying to get it over to Tyler Jerks. Crowd still screaming nonsensely. Trying to get the Black Bears energized as they have a three goal advantage. Corgan crosses the line. Comes down the right wing side. Throws a low angle shot. I believe off the glove. And that will bounce into the third row. Right into a fan's lap. Never saw it coming. No Brooks. Everybody lost that puck including me. I was searching thinking that buck might have popped up in the air. And we're going to see it come down from the rafters. And we see Yates get it. A little toe drag between the legs of Oganezov off of the blocker and off of the iron. And then Jurich can't clean up the rebound. 
Face off one back by Merkel. They go for the home run play, and here comes Tyler Jurch the other way. Jurch, a slap shot and a save made by Martin. Fans on the rebound, looking for the fifth goal of the contest for the Black Bears. And now it comes out of the zone, and Jurch, don't know if the wise play there was to wind up for a clapper and try to go ahead and deke around it, but nonetheless, a good shot put on net by 22, the alternate captain. Now crossing the line on sides. This time he goes for a deke, but has it separated from him by J.C. Moritz. Moritz turns it over. Kirkby centers up nobody home in the slot for the Black Bears. As many of members of Binghamton thought that puck was coming out of the zone. Shepard has it come all the way down on his paddle and here just throw it back for Merkel. Merkel fumbles on it and leaves it for Walters. But Walters stopping and starting behind his own net. Pressured by Wilson. And now the breakout can commence for the Black Bears. Kirkby will just glide it into the corner. Get off for a line change. And Yates will not put up any contest. And here skate off to the bench and Lewis will come on. Puck is available in center ice. Lewis almost lining up his man Bozerin saw it coming. Fitzgerald crosses the line on sides, throws it into the corner. And now Anderson, 77s matching up with each other as Asp will try to throw it out of the zone, but a good forecheck by Lewis, centering pass, trying to find Anderson out in front. DeBacco and Anderson get their sticks tied up. And that'll send Anderson down to the ice. And now Delaware's turn to go for a line change. As Fitzgerald has it behind his own net, gets double teamed. A forward coming from both sides. That should mean numbers going the other way for the Black Bears, but it gets stripped away by Asp. Asp has it cut in half and three on one. Come the Black Bears the other way. Powell and Bussell, wrist shot, and Powell sends it off for the glove of Martin. Puck still becomes available down low in the left wing faceoff dot. Anderson centering pass for Bussell out in front and a blocker save made by Martin. Powell chases after the rebound at the blue line, gets it down low. Anderson tries to center up to Thompson in the slot all alone, but thrown off of the glass and stays in the realm of play. I thought that one was coming out for sure. Camped out at the blue line is Thompson. Icing is called, but the goaltender comes out, and this will be a center ice faceoff coming up. 8.39 left to go, and we're taking a media timeout. Black Bears up 4-1. to one. Don't go anywhere, folks. You're listening to Binghamton Hockey on Fox Sports 1430. from the line change, no, nullified the icing, got there when Alton got the high to send Anderson out and it'll be a center ice faceoff. Another faceoff goes away with a with a good hand from Cooper. Wilson goes for the shot clock and gets rebound away from Chris Law, but maybe it's just too easy. Good shot off of the post, way to the crossbar, and a stick becomes available for Ryan O. Something soft out here, but Brett Parker goes to Ethan Wilson and that is going to be so Wilson absolutely pays the price a heavy hit laid on the side takes it gets to Marcus Schultz flips the pass out in front and I thought that puck actually went through the pad of the goaltender I thought that was a goal but Martin holds on to it 806 left to go yeah the Flyers were up three and a half shooting the clock there allows them to do a change quickly as we've seen a lot of back and forth action here Brooks Thompson won the faceoff, but Parker fumbled with it in his skates. Now they go the other way, stripped away though by Parker making up for the play. Thompson centering up, trying to find someone dressed in black. Cutting will just slap it over to the captain Schultz into a cross ice pass, open area. Cutting with it down low, centering pass, nobody home. Thompson fumbling with it now behind the net. And Tobacco skating away. And a big hit laid on by Cutting. And Coachman lays a hit, but he's gonna take a penalty this time. 
as it's going to be a hold against seven dressed in black. I, 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 don't, I didn't see a holding there, Brooks. I saw a check by Coachman, um, but perhaps it was something that I didn't see happen in the play that I just missed quickly. Coachman going to go serve the minor. Huge hit, though, by Taylor Cutting in the defensive zone of the Delaware Thunder. I think you're starting to see more and more run for Taylor Cutting Brooks because of the injury to Nikita Ivashkin earlier in the in the game. Black Bears win the face off and wrap it off of the glass all the way down. Starting the penalty kill with clearing it out of the zone. They have Kirkby, Walters, Powell, and Bussell on the Northeastern Striping Corporation penalty kill, which has done a pretty good job so far tonight. Wilson throws a centering pass, look out. That went straight into the crowd, and that was a bullet headed right into the third row of the stands. Section BB, C15, Section 2, just got a free puck, Brooks. Quick reactions by the woman sitting there, by the way. Quickly got out of the way, just missed. Puck pops off, the bleachers behind them pops up for the grab. Kirkby wins it forward, pushes it out of the zone, and the Black Bears will change their forwards, Anderson and Thompson coming out onto the ice here. Seven minutes left to go in this one. Black Bears up by three. Delaware is imperative for the Thunder to score on this power play to try to claw their way back into it. And Black Bears could have had a shorthanded opportunity, but Powell just backhands it out of the zone. Just a little too much mustard there, Brooks. I don't think you know that he had guys flying the zone. That's a smart play, just always just flying it out. When you're in the lead, you don't need to try to push for shorthanded goals unless you know it's absolutely there. Walters gives his man a rough ride, and Corrigan has it now down low. Over for Moritz. Moritz centering for Gafferoff. Wrist shot never made it through. Backhander, and Wilson scores. As Shepard gets caught in no man's land outside of the crease, the first shot never made it there. And Delaware cashes in for the first time tonight on the power play, and we're back to a two-goal game. Yeah, it's unfortunate, Brooks. Walters just lost his man for half a second on the shot, trying to find the puck. Unfortunately, Wilson keeps his stick on the ice. He's able just to just grab the off weird bounce off the initial shot, ends up on his backhand, he puts it in the back of the net. Don't go anywhere, folks. We got a good one. 6.30 left to go here in this one. Delaware in a two-goal deficit. Face off one back by the Black Bears, and Coachman back out on the ice after serving that penalty. Turns into Delaware's second goal. And now Coachman trying to fight off some Delaware pressure. He does, forcing them to touch up, but... The Thunder keep at Coachman, and they keep trying to go the other way. And now the Thunder in control of the puck once again. Assist on the goal going to Dennis Gafferoff and Alex Susi. Two goal game, just under six minutes left to go. Kirby slaps it ahead of Alex, excuse me, Gavin Yates. And Tyson Kirby with it down low. Susi, who's been in the box for fighting, now getting his first point of the night. Gaffer off with a two-point night for the Thunder. A goal and an assist. Powell was hit down from behind. As the puck becomes available, Oganezov crosses the line on sides. Kirkby throws it back into neutral zone, and Yates misskated it for a mere second. Still a chance for Yates. Over to Jerch, back to Tyson Kirkby, and they grab it right back. 5-2 Binghamton as Tyson Kirkby grabs Excellent. his second of the night. Al, uh, Brooks, excellent play by Tyson Kirkby and Tyler Gurich to just go one, two, and send and send that puck in the back of the net. Gurich with the patience to get the puck on a stick, make the keeper, Martin, commit to his side, and then give it back to Kirkby on a perfect, a perfect pass. He fit that through the window, as we see on the Heinz Energy replay. Just an absolute perfect pass by Tyler Gurich. Jurich being unselfish there, picking up another assist. Gavin Yates, two points, two secondary helpers. And and uh, Susie, I believe, just got an unsports, I believe, just got a misconduct, Brooks. We're seeing yep. what's going to make of this one. And it looks like Susie's night is done. As the fans in the stands come up with their own gestures to wave goodbye to Susie. Looks like he's got a head start on the showers tonight. 
Looks like it's just a game misconduct and we will remain at five on five. But as soon as the Black Bears get a little bit uneasy, two goal games, six minutes left to go, still doable. They go down the other side of the ice and they cash in Tyson Kirkby with his second of the night. And this is gonna be an incredibly hard comeback for Delaware Brooks. Without your captain on the ice and Alex Susie and one of their best goal scorers, really the spark club of their entire offense, it, it really is gonna be a tough slog to get back into this game. Black Bears win the faceoff back. And Tyson Kirby with his second of the night. Now 14 on the season. Now tied with his teammate, Tyler Jurich, as well. And you know that those two will be having a good laugh in the locker room after this one. Fitzgerald now crosses the line on sides. Stopping and starting. Fitzgerald trying to find Thompson with a no-look pass. But it will go the other way as Delaware throws it out of the zone. And collected by Kyle Powell. Alex Susi given a 10 minute game misconduct, but we remain at five on five, hopping over the stick of cutting. Black Bears are off sides, they got a tag up. Delaware just throws it loosely back into their own zone. Under five minutes left to go here, and the Black Bears find themselves up by three for the second time tonight. Debaco crosses the line on sides, wrist shot, blocked into the corner by Shepard. And Taylor Cutting with a heavy hit on DeBacco. And now with precious time coming off the clock. Corgan trying to center up for Amatitis. Good defensive play by Parker and kicked away into the slot by Shepard. And that could have been dangerous. Corgan was right in the slot, hopped over his stick. And Delaware now touches up. Fresh bodies on the ice for Binghamton. Oganay's off over to Wilson, the last goal scorer for the Thunder. Throws it over to neutral ice for Amatitis. Amatitis chips it around the defense, trying to get into it. But Walters is there to slap it around the boards. Roussel is waiting. Here, throw it behind for Merkel. Merkel, though, a takeaway. Shepard misses the puck, and we're right back to another two goal game. Turnaround shot, and the Black Bears are up by two now as the Thunder cut into the lead once again. I believe John Amatitis collects the loose change coming off of the Merkel turnover, and a two goal game once again. Yeah, you can't have that for Merkel in that situation. There, you've already basically taken the air out of the sails of the Thunder by scoring a late third period goal, having their captain sit down for a misconduct, and then you make a bad turnover, Brooks, in your defensive zone and allow the puck to go right out in front of the net. An unacceptable turnover at this point in the game. Five to three. Once again, Delaware is still in this one. It's a mountain to climb, but plenty of time for both sides. Coachman sends his man down into the boards. That's O'Reilly. O'Reilly comes away with the puck, though. Ask ups the puck for Bazarin. And Schultz now skates away with it. Finds Kirkby, the last goal scorer for Binghamton. As Gavin Yates crosses the line on sides in the high slot. Gets it back for Jerks. Jerks scores! They follow up another Delaware shift with a Tyler Jurich goal, his second of the night. And now Kirkby and Jurich both have two goals on a Saturday night here in Binghamton. Yeah, it's huge when you can have a guy like Tyler Jurich and Tyson Kirkby go each for a brace, put him in the back of the net, and that's gonna be a nail in the coffin for Ch by Tyler Jurich. What a great job by Yates carrying the puck, gets it onto Jurich, stick in the low post, and he's able to bury the puck over the shoulder of Martin. Tyler Jurich got the scoring started, and he grabs goal number six. You take your final look at the Heinz Energy replay. Black Bears looking to add on some more. The captain trying to stick handle in a phone booth around a couple of defenders. Kirkby crosses the line on sides. Jurich and Kirkby play catch with each other, trying for a little bit of give and go. They know a hat trick is available here tonight. Ivashkin had one last night, and he had a five point night. And now we skate around, and Tyler Jurich trying to find Kirkby camped out at the blue line. Kirkby self pass, not self pass, rather, over to the captain. Schultz with it down low on his backhand. His eyes up, trying to find somebody in the sweater, looking for him. And Cutting, looking for his second of the night, settled it down. The wise decision there, but sent it wide of the target, a little bit on the short side. 2.30 left to go here. And now after the Black Bears, you're just hat trick hunting for Tyler Jurich and Tyson Kirkby. Jake or, Schultz. Or trying to get Taylor Cutting to his brace goal, which is a pair. And Parker now in the high slot, wrist shot, and 
Martin fumbled it a little bit, but he covers up. We're headed to our final media timeout with 12.20 left to go in this one. Black Bears a couple of minutes away from another weekend sweep winning their fourth game in a row. Don't go anywhere, folks, on Fox 1430 in Binghamton. Next Black Bears home game is Friday, December 16th. It's summer in December. Get your tickets now by calling the office at 607-722-7367. That one almost snuck up on me right there. Lost my train of thought there as we changed the graphic off of the video board. Now they're talking about the holiday pack, which is also available at the same phone number. I'm not going to try that again. But blackbearshop.com. For only $80, you get four t-shirts. They have two holiday options to choose from. You get four tickets and you get a Christmas ornament, perfect for the holiday season. Uh, an excellent deal at any price, Brooks. And Black Bears win the face off, and they throw it in down low, kept in by cutting, wrapped around the boards. And we continue on here as Delaware skates away into neutralize Corgan. Has it on his stick, they're down by three, two minutes left to go, low angle wrist shot, and Shepard made the save. That's a good shot from a low angle from Chris Corgan. Doesn't matter how much time's left in the game. Keep that one in your bag. It is going to work out at some point later on in the year. Stretch pass for Parker, trying to just slap it on target a little bit too out in front. And cutting. Ooh, Thought about lining up O'Reilly, but he decided to lay off. Kept his finger off the trigger that time. I'll tell you what, Brooks, that looks like one of those videos you see on social media where a uh, great white shark just pulls up at the last second before an attack. That time, Cutting will lay a hit on DeBacco behind the play. And crowd gets a little bit of an applause. Some have headed for the exits. Many have remained here as the Black Bears try to complete a weekend sweep and win their fourth game in a row. But this play is off sides as Delaware crosses the line a little too early. Yeah, Brooks, it has been a, a, exactly what we, they said. We needed to attack in the special teams needed to get after the puck, and the Binghamton Black Bears have been incredibly excess successful on the special teams. Opposite of the one power play goal they gave up on the uh, penalty to Coachman. One power play goal for Delaware and one power play goal for the Black Bears as well. And now they skate out two on two, 60 seconds left to go in this one. Anderson with it on his backhand, centering it up in front for Bussell. Bussell sidestep a hit. Trying to find Anderson in the slot. A little bit too soft on that pass. And Rossmus Asp from Sweden will throw it into the zone. This time they are on sides. Merkel chips away at it. And we'll see if cooler heads can prevail here in the final 40 seconds of this one. Puck gets deflected up high. Pawed down by Merkel. Merkel trying to find Bussell. Camped out at center ice. He does. Bussell sidesteps. Wrist shot wide of the target. That was a beauty of a toe drag. And Merkel just directs it to the open corner. Bussell again crosses the line. And this time he'll just flick it into the open corner. But instead, caught out of midair by Trevor Martin, who drops it down to play it. Final 10 seconds left to go here in this one. Delaware, final opportunity to get one on the board. Corrigan skating around Walters. And behind the net, centering pass. O'Reilly fumbles with it. Backhand save made by Shepard. Four seconds in three, two, and one. And the Black Bears will skate away with their fourth straight victory in a row. Three goal advantage for the team here tonight as they win by a final count of six to three. Yeah, Brooks, uh, a six three victory. Sending the fans home happy with a burger goal. Everybody who's leaving, make sure to grab your cheeseburger vouchers. Compliments of Burger King on your way out. An excellent full team win. It, it felt like the Black Bears got a little complacent in that second period. Not at all in the third period. They they played a complete game there. 
A couple mental mistakes that you'd like to eliminate, but those are going to happen in every game. Black Bears win. Final count, 6-3. to three. Don't go anywhere, folks. La Quinta In and Sweets postgame show coming up after these messages on Fox Sports 1430 in Binghamton.